Nestled deep within the skyline of skyscrapers here in the sensational city of Sao Paulo lies the 2024 Six Invitational, Siege's most illustrious tournament and grandest prize. We are into the playoffs as we look to find out which of our teams will get to feel and hear the roar of our jam-packed Brazilian crowd this weekend. We started the day off with Big Daddy Milos and it was a beautiful thing to see him back. But my name's Ian Chambers and I will lead you through the end of this play day. I am not alone. I am joined by the biggest brain, I'm going to call him, the biggest brain in Siege. Fresh is in the building. Fresh, how are you doing? I'm great, Ian. Thank you for asking. I mean, I would have been great, but where is he? Where is he? Where's he gone? Where? You know who I'm talking him? about. Where is he? I've seen him. See I've you, seen can go him. you can see him? What's he doing? What are you doing? He, I, I, I think he thinks it's 2023. Over here. Headset on. He's got, you're, you're on the desk now. Yeah. Not coaching G2, okay? All right. This is this is where you. You good? You all right? What, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, the last time I was stood next to you in front of cameras at a six invitational was before you raised the hammer. Your third. Just just to make clear here. That's a while ago. Yeah. Does it feel like a while ago? You know, it's uh, it's a year or so. I, I'm pretty happy where I'm at now. I yeah. think that they stand a good chance doing it again, though. That's going to be a very interesting game to see how they play. Yeah, well, it's the undefeated in the group stages. Now here, it's the SI champions of last year up against a very tough opponent in FaZe Clan. Fresh, I know that you're excited for this because it's two of the biggest names who also happen to be the biggest performers so far. Yeah, I think it's potentially, you know, this is why we're excited. It's potentially two of the top three teams at this tournament coming into the tournament in terms of expectations. Specifically for G2, they obviously hit top of their group and this was very much expected for G2. But what I want to highlight like is how yeah. the fact is they went 2-0 every single game did not drop a map they played also on their bad maps played a lot of clubhouse a lot of chalet maps they don't traditionally like and also they were basically just dominating <laughs> And because they were dominating, and you said that they play their off maps, they've also played very few maps. So they have so much hidden and they have so much going into this stage. It's honestly super impressive. I've spent a bit of time with a couple of the members of this roster and they are genuinely like Siege's rock stars and they are loving every single second of this. Let's talk about, well, there's been a lot of talk about the meta, specifically from you two, but G2 are tackling it really well, Fabian. Yeah, they are. And the, it comes from their strength of just being really, really good individual players that the firepower they've got going for them, it just excels everything. They're also the masters of this meta. They're basically the team that created it. The speed that they can play things with, that just overall, they. They have everything. They know when to slow down. They know how to play as a group. They know how to spread out. They know everything. They are the best team in my mind at this meta. And now it's just up to Strolat. Yeah, I think this is, you know, one of, obviously they're the reigning world champions, right? We talk about them in the context of W7M, that they're not one of the favorites for this event. They are. They're one of the best teams they're with the best players, the best support staff, the best strategy. Attitude at times can be a little bit left to determined, but when they hit LAN events, they seem to turn on that attitude and become those professionals. Let's take a look at their opponents who are also professionals. FaZe Clan just defeated rivals, lost 2-1 earlier today. This is a very different challenge, Fresh. Yeah, I think FaZe are an exceptional team. I think they're an exceptional team, although they did have a couple of slip-ups in groups. They obviously would have expected to come out of that group in first place. Didn't happen, had to win today against loss. The one thing that I like about FaZe is their reactions in terms of reading into their opponent inside of the round. They're not afraid to change up if they believe that will give them their best uh, chance at winning the round. Yeah, I mean, one thing they've proven running into this series, Fabian, is their tremendous flexibility. Yeah, they have massive flexibility. It's like they have four players that can all play any role that they want, any operator that they want, and then on top of that, sprinkle on some cyber, and you know, you have one of the best fraggers in the world, if not the one that is the best, it could yeah. be argued because he's incredible. It's just, you have an amazing team. And yeah. FaZe, just know the meta as well, just as good as G2, maybe a step behind them. Fresh, you've got a, a clip that demonstrates this very well. Yeah, I do. And I think this is one of the things about FaZe for me, is that when they see an opportunity inside the round, they're not afraid to get creative with it. This is when they played up against Bliss. Um, and this is... This is basically when they were playing the CCTV breach. Um, 
This isn't the clip you requested this isn't the clip. for the record. No, I will be honest. No, this isn't the clip <laughs> that we requested. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. But basically what happened in that round is that they identified an opportunity on a gym defense. Yep. And they were then able to use Kavira to try and basically set themselves up with an interrogation. Yeah. It didn't quite work because Dokubi basically scuffed that up because Dokubi was in play and the Kavira had to answer the phone. Had that have worked, it was really intuitive. Intuitive. Yeah, look, these things happen crossways, big event, lots going on, but fresh reaction times and their read phase kind has just been superb, hasn't it? Yeah, it's great. It's it's genuinely what makes them one of the best teams. Their read into the game, the way that they're able to see not just what their plan is, but what their opponent's plan is, tie it all together. And then the big thing for me is make the right decision and make the right decision as a team together. That's their key strength. All right, well, we are ready now to get into our map vetoes for this huge best of three. Let's take a look at where we're going. We'll start off with the bands. And you know what? I want you two to talk us through it, as always, like we do, Fabian, uh, as we start to reveal our picks. Yeah, Cafe being a pick from face, it kind of makes sense. They really like that map, and so does G2, which is why maybe I'm a bit confused about it. Border, however, from G2, I think is a massive win for them because I don't know if FaZe plays that map whilst I know that G2 does. Yeah, so preferences for both of these teams for these three maps is they have exactly the same preference if you did the maps one to nine. However, so I could have seen it plausible that actually G2 picks Cafe, whereas obviously it was FaZe. G2 have countered FaZe. FaZe have three maps that they don't play. And out of those three maps, they left Border open. And G2, I think we're always going to pick the one map that FaZe left open there. It happened to be Border. Me and Fabian were actually speculating that it could have been Consulate. Yep. And FaZe maybe should have left Consulate open and chose the defense start on Consulate. But they left Border open. And that's a risk because they don't get the defense kind of advantage on Border. Yeah, they could have just been smart with their operator's bands and just not gotten rid of one of the power operators, start defense, go up 5-1 solid or even 6-0 solid, and then just one or two attacks needed. So we think they messed up a little bit in the ban phase, but it's up to them to prove that they didn't. Feels a little bit tense in, in the room at the moment, Fresh, and that is obviously because if you manage to win this series, you book your spot in front of that yes. sold out packed crowd here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. So there's a lot on the line here. Especially for FaZe, yeah. because I'll, I'm just gonna say it, Brazil's not been good today. There's a real world where there's very few Brazilian teams on the main stage. So FaZe have a big opportunity to be one of those Brazilian teams that comes in from the upper bracket. Well, like you say, we've already sent one tournament favorite down into the lower bracket in W7M. Which other big dog will join them? It is time to start the journey. Map one is ready with Lynx and Stokes. On the first day of our playoffs, of the bracket, we have what could very well be a grand final caliber match between G2 and FaZe. As Ian just said, Sam, we've already seen W7M, two-time major champions, knock down to the lower bracket. And now it's either going to be one of the most consistent teams of the year, always the bridesmaid, never the bride in FaZe Clan, or the current world champions, G2, to join them. Man, it's bound to be an interesting one, especially with Cafe as our very first map here, folks. This one's been very interesting when it comes to the dynamics of siege at this event some teams finding some success in their offenses like Virtus pro and that could be re uh, recreated here with g2 at home the social cues seemed uh, pretty loud a little biased a little biased i would say but as we know the g2 name that was originally built on the backs of fabian and pangu it stood tall for a very long time. Everyone a very big fan of this organization, of this roster, and there's a damn good reason, Carter. And I, just one of the many reasons you could be a fan of G2, two own groups, current world champions, some of the best players in the world on this roster. Going into this game, the lowest rated player is Alamau at a 1.11. That is yep. the lowest rated player. And of course you have Benja at a 1.21, but everyone on this roster in their group, sure it wasn't the group of death, but as we just saw, Dark Zero, no slouch, they stomped Liquid 7-3-7-1, and G2 beat them 2-0. That is an immensely impressive victory, and this team does not look like they have any signs of slowing down. But FaZe were able to warm up earlier against Los. It was a close 2-1, but still a victory nonetheless, as the ban phase is almost done on Cafe, we have some of the 
main stage taken down like Ying, but some of the new favorites in the in a post frag grenade world, Capitout taken off the board as well. Yeah, I think it's a really smart shout to be able to remove him as well as the Ying. It's going to make the offense a little bit more complex. We should be seeing people reach to other different tools here to try and either dislodge or make life a little bit more difficult for these defenders. So we'll see what each, uh, what each team does respectively. Phase or do you reach a little bit farther down inside of that bag of cash and we might have a sledge here for first time headset explosion we see in chat so might need something fixed up here for g2 but that offensive lineup from phase already screaming out on some new ideals or like the grim coming in here as well but we'll cross that bridge once we get back to it carter g2 has looked absolutely indomitable this event and you as you already had pointed out alamao with a 1.11 uno with a 1.11 as well on their ratings every single person across the board here with a positive KD and a positive entry. You can rarely ever say that about a team, but yet it's true here for G2 as this team is looking, rearing to go for another hammer here in Sao Paulo. It, and it's anything less than that is a failure. Is. You can you can drop a major final. Yep. You know what? That it, it is what it is. You could even drop two, especially when one of your opponents at the previous event is W7M, who go on to win the entire major. That's going to happen sometimes. But this is your event. This is the event where everyone was undervaluing G2. They had a very good year, and I think there were some people in the know who said, you know, I think G2 actually have a shot. But me? I didn't think this new iteration had a shot. I didn't think they had what it takes, I, whether they could gel together properly, whether they could meld. I didn't think they had it last year at SI23, and they proved us all wrong by going down to the lower bracket on the first day and making a run all the way through to stop W7M from getting a hammer that many thought was rightfully theirs. And here, they have the hammer. They need to defend it. Anything less than reclamation could very well be counted a failure. And if FaZe Clan are still hot, coming off their game from Los, they could find another, similar to last year, another very early drop down to the lower bracket. Yeah, and talking to some of the other talent and, you know, seeing some different considerations on things like Twitter and just social media in general, a lot of teams thinking that some of the NA teams might be the ones to actually be able to have a solid bout against G2. But let's not count Brazil out of this just yet. We still have to cross this right here, see what FaZe can do as you and I casted their series earlier today. That was a little bit of a heater. Oh, yeah. All three we maps up against Los, but that also means that FaZe is more than ready to go. They're more than warmed up. I bumped into them in the elevator on the way up as well after that uh, bout. And uh, they were in good spirits, man. They were very happy with the results from earlier. So let's see what they can do against G2, especially on this offensive side going for the full clear as we often see on cafe as the desk mentioned this is a very high preference map for both of these teams something they're very comfortable on but in that Atlanta semifinal which you and I talked about earlier the rematch earlier phase dropped this and they have looked a little shaky on this a lot of close games at SI so far but it is cafe they're comfortable on it and they know when you're attacking that bottom floor bomb site if you want to take the entirety of the three minutes you might as well go from the top down to the bottom, especially when Buck has really regrown into his former glory, almost as if you'd think with the pick rate we've seen, he got his nades back. <laughs> and Cyber, especially on the skeleton key, he's already made his way to the second floor within the first half of the round and is demolishing those floorboards to find whatever angles he can. First of two C4s goes out from G2, finds nothing. This is beautiful. This is exactly what you want from your offense here on Cafe, especially attacking into the kitchen site. You want to get immediate clearance in towards this mid floor. Start using the skeleton key to buck up all of the flooring across dining, mining, as well as train, making it more complicated for G2 to try and play some of these pivotal areas around the map. That's why you see Doki shifting over into Freezer. He's trying to catch them off guard here. Another one to roll in, except he, this time around, he obviously will get drawn. You have to worry about these areas like coffee. Uh, you know, as FaZe will more than likely have longer lines of sight established by Cyber on this buck. This is one of these angles I love on Cafe. You can see all the, most all the way into the back that immediately might counter the freezer drop, which at this point, FaZe seemed like whether they wanted to or not, 
they're gonna find themselves falling into, but they haven't dealt with Uno on bottom white stairs. Doki taking a lot of damage. He's been sitting beneath that freezer hatch, trying to fire shots up at the attackers up above. Finally, he's punished for it and forced off, but again, it's Uno who's really doing the heavy lifting for G2's chances in this round. He's still holding white stairs, but a double at the bottom. Alamau and Doki both cut down. While Uno might remain, FaZe have a very solid advantage, compounded more so by Cyber's vertical play, I believe still up above. Uno cuts him down through the hatch. Vita King able to get the bomb down. Uno still fighting back, going for the retake, spots him, but he's just a second too late. Has to prone through the freezer wall. Now Virtue has to fight across the bomb site to get round one for G2. And they have the vertical control? No, they do not because FaZe completely shutting out G2 in this round. They forced Virtue's hand and he can't even play it. Round one for FaZe in the post. That was so good from FaZe right there, Carter. They break down the top two floors. They open up all of the flooring there on that mid level through mining, through dining, through train, just like we talked about. And then what do they do? They rest, they chill, they bait G2. You saw the dance happening on the white door. You can basically expand that to the rest of phase. What they did there is they wanted G2 to step up so they could take these gunfights. They didn't want to be the ones to try and just swing in through sight right to G2 set up and die. They wanted somebody to try and play out that timing and take that fight. And that's exactly what they got. They got two huge frags on that. Yeah, Uno's able to try and battle back, but the plant's already going down inside of coffee. There was really nothing to do for G2 once they were able to scoop out those three bodies from G2. Uno in such a position to stop that round, but as you said, FaZe are able to get so much ground around that, get so many kills around that position, which is how they write themselves out of seemingly a corner. If they just went for the normal drop and G2 either didn't give openings or FaZe didn't find them and make them make their own opportunities, they've got to run down white stairs, they've got to go down the hatch. And let's take a look at how they did it. We see the initial kill blinded by his own teammate, getting the brown stairs position and Cyber using that verticality to excellent, excellent work on that top floor. So FaZe able to win that first attack. Again, this is their map pick, so if you're hoping to break that attacking side of Curse, you'd think it would be FaZe able to start out right here on this attacking side. They won Kitchen. Now, as you'll see in a second, G2 are making their way up the top floor. Not all the way to the top, but up a floor. Up to the top, eventually. Yeah, we are more than likely not going to see a bar defense, I would assume. Uh, let me pull this up real quickly so we can talk about the stat line that Ace loves to bring up, because I, I would just agree with him. The top floor sucks. It's not good. 16 plays. It's almost tied with Mining Dining. I'll give you the Mining Dining one first, because it's way funnier if I do it that way. 18 plays on Mining Dining, 72% defensive overall win rate. 16 plays, folks. I'll give you five seconds. Look across to your friend. Take a gander. Take a guess. What do you think it is? It has to be 240. Get your answers in. All right, Sam. What's the number? 19%. Oh, that's not good. That is not that good, is buddy. That is not good. That's less than 16 plays. That is less than four. Four wins. 4B25, 4 divided by 16, 1 over 4. That's the math for you folks. 19%, not good. Not good whatsoever. So maybe we will, maybe we won't see bar and cocktail. But right now, we're seeing reading room, a very standard bomb site. But this time, the bunk has changed hands. Oh. It's KDS. Oh. Yes! And look at that coordination. Somebody shooting open the window and KDS watching right as Benjamin Master rotates across. Those yokais will not be moving, my friends. G2, there's something about FaZe you gotta remember. This squad always plays up to their opponent. Every single time that we see them, it's always gonna be a duel. It's always gonna be a fight. These rounds, they're going to be difficult to gather. Doesn't mean it's impossible, but they're at least gonna give you a run for your money, and that's what we're seeing. FaZe already opening up the game here on some solid team play. Excited to see what they can continue to produce here, especially with Uno taking a big fight. Alamau's gonna assist him as well, as he will run, actually hop outside. More than likely gonna go all the way down to the dining window here. He's got that metal hand, so he'll be able to pop that window in one go. And Uno even rotates down to uh, give him some support. A bridge back to the bomb site. Time to make That's opening new. pick going the way of phase and then traded out by G2. But with, all, but with, yeah, no more C4s on the board as Doki has used his. 
a lot of this vertical control, unless it's taken by maybe a gunfight from G2 below, will be uncontested. So far, two rounds now. FaZe have run the Buck and the Ram combo for the soft destruction. And look at look at the fruit it's bore, it's bore Sam. Yeah. Look at how much of that floor is gone. It's amazing. Uh, and you know, when Ram came out, a lot of us were having that brainstorm go off, right? Where is the most amount of soft destruction on maps? Because that's where you're going to put those boogies down, is they simply Roomba across the floor and soak up as much of that soft destruction as possible. Uno, you're not going to be able to kill him here. He's on Ooh. solid ground. He can't find the angle just yet, but he's going to force him off at least. A little splash damage catching Vita King, and he's worried about that. So he's going to move in over towards dining. He's got this table here, Carter, and this matters quite a bit to a situation like this. He's found a little way in, but Doki also might just find a way out. There's a reinforcement in his Doki. way. Two different people inside of the A-bomb site. Spots both, gets one of those kills, but now he's got to get three more for the quad. Another spot on the diffuser. Excellent flip by Doki. He's got control of the case, but not complete control of the round. Intel on one player moving through reading, knows he's there, but the phase player plays passive. Cyber getting aggressive, moves to take the fight, but Doki swings the angle on ADS, and phase capitalizes two rounds in a row. They find the gap. G2 not really having too many bodies over inside of train and mining. FaZe able to practically convert off of that. Yeah, G2 have some bodies implemented on the basement floor to be able to try and fend it off just for a moment. But a lot of G2 getting thrown right to the ax as soon as they try and re-enter into the site. FaZe already having that entire crossfire as well as just flank watch set up on so many different areas. Such a big issue there for G2. It's again a huge find here initially onto Benja, onto the Echo as well, something that you desperately need. And just a great setup overall from FaZe as the trades were coming back and forth. I will say, to credit to G2, I love that little bit of coordination on the white stairs position right there. It's so common for somebody to play outside that white window, either flash in or hold the angle. And teams will often jump out on that player, but you even have Uno baiting the attention a little bit, showing face to the Nomad, getting flashed, and then while the Handy is so focused on getting that kill, Alamo jumps out. So even though it's 0-2 so far, remaining. G2 not winning a single round, there are these nice little micro plays we're seeing, these nice little Five adjustments that still show that G2 have come to play. Sure, they might have not won a single round yet, but there are these good moments. The overall strategy in round one, and there's still some nice little individual coordination on the squad. Very well and truly a battle of titans. Yep. We'll just have to see if FaZe are the ones to start running away from it. Well, that's the thing. When, when teams like G2 start doing really, really good, I think people kind of forget that they're humans. They're like, yeah. oh, these guys are literal gods. They cannot be defeated. Guys, they're, they're still a person. I promise you. I promise you things can go wrong. Oh, Alamo. Prepping for the C4. You're know, always Ooh. listening for that hook, but there was a lot of noise going on, so he probably just tried to throw it in timing. But since FaZe was taking their time coming up this rappel here, it's not going to do anything to them. That's not the star of the show, though. Most definitely You not. go for the C4 early on, maybe, but Alamo playing that humidor. He's got the close angle with the shotgun, so if anybody goes through the red drop, doesn't clear him out, could easily win that engagement depending on how careless FaZe are, but not really a word I would often use to describe FaZe. Maybe there's a little small part of the bomb side of the map that doesn't get droned and they get punished for it, but it's always those small mistakes, not necessarily the big ones. Five drones left right now, over half of them gone. We have seen FaZe struggle with this drone economy a bit today, and mostly, especially when they're susceptible to great intel denial from the enemy team, and right now, Benja running that Solus have, has got G2 down to, oh, sorry, phase down to four drones. Maybe not entirely him, but the intel denial from G2 is working exceptionally so far. Most definitely. And although I said we probably wouldn't get a top floor defense, boy, would you look at that. There it is. We'll oh. see if uh, G2 can assist with this. KDS is going to fly in. Alamal not swinging in through the hallway just yet. KDS will find one. Well, now still trying to play things close to the chest here with that shotgun. A nice find, though, by Virtue inside of Freezer. Leads down into the two versus two. Vita King will go down, but they know where that other player is. It's only Cyber, though, and Cyber was playing the window, Carter. That's so very unfortunate. He's going to have to try and reassess this. Even though Virtue and Uno are both quite low, he's more than likely going to have to get gifted something to make the most out of this situation. Excellent trades from G2 on the site there, though. Cyber does have to work through this 1v2 with a mirror window in his way. He knows somebody could be playing behind there. Oh, uh -oh. very quick down. Does he know Uno? Does he know? can see the mirror window. He knows he's there now. Okay, 
now we have a bit of a gambit on our hands. Virtue could relay Intel. He spots the head of the Mira. They both anticipate the rotation. Oh. Another lengthy free fire. Oh. Uno put to very low HP, running like hell back to the bathroom. And Cyber sends his blood in the water. He's got a beat on Punch his tray. Punches the Mira window. Oh. But Uno finishes him off. Very close. Almost 1v2 for Cyber. But Uno just brings it over the line to get G2 there first. Oh, Cyber's going to want that one back so badly, Carter. Just getting a little bit ahead of himself in that split moment there. And, you know, those mirror windows, they, they were just, they were their own little entity for so very long where you really couldn't have an effect over them unless you hit that gas canister at the back that even to this day, even at a professional level, in those split second moments, you sometimes just forget. He's almost able to get that info away from him, but he crouches right back into the angle at the very last second, allowing Uno to clip him on the side and, Ooh, FaZe, almost able to get one over on G2 in the clutch moment here. And here it is again. Watch, he just steps right back into the angle right after, and that's all Uno needed. He just needed that split second there. You really wish Cyber just pumped the brakes, just giving Uno enough time to get antsy about things. But look at how close that round was that we just saw in those replays. The first kill right as FaZe give the go-ahead on that flood, with Cyber watching the window, of course, but Vita King, Souls, everyone else moving inside of the map. It all kicks off because Virtue through a tiny hole inside of the humidor. Just one little wood panel gone, sees Souls' head and gets the first kill of the round. And from that point, it goes from 4v5, 4v4, 4v3, and G2 constantly keeping the lead because of that initial pick. It was a good setup from both teams. It just so happens with that one little find from Virtue, they're able to keep ahead. And it's Styber works it down to a 1v1, but it's still G2. We're the ones who kicked off that set of engagements and put an end to phases so far attacking win streak. They got two in a row, but now we start repeating bomb sites. We're going back down to the bottom floor, and we have the buck, we have the ram again. But the Monty Sam, that's a little bit of an addition. I'm happy that you talked about it because we saw how many times he got banned in our series earlier. Uh, three times. Yeah, not a single person wanting either Lowe's or FaZe to have it. Like, ah, we're just going to completely circumnavigate this. Both of, us, both of us are too good with this. We don't want to deal with it on the defensive side. But G2, they didn't really care. They got rid of Capital. Honestly, I respect that a lot just because Capital has been so solid, especially when you're attacking bomb sites, you know, like that top floor, like this basement where you're trying to dislodge people from hard to reach areas, kind of like sink, uh, you know, things along those lines. So FaZe are more than likely going to be using this Monty to its fullest advantage, and I bet they're pretty happy that it's readily available. I'm sure one of the great satisfactions I think you and I have both had in casting this tournament so far, but specifically watching FaZe, how quickly Cyber seems to get into the positions he needs to in the round. Cyber knows that by the mid-round, he's got to be opening up that middle floor. And on Oregon, when we saw in the game against Los earlier, he knew he had to be in the building acquiring map control. And what happened? Within 30 seconds, Cyber's in the building. Here, within a minute, 15 seconds, Cyber and KDS are in position to start opening up these floors. That is how quick this team can be. It might seem like they're slow and patient, and that's true, but so much is being accomplished early on that they dedicate that remaining minute and a half just to figuring out how to pierce the execute. They do not waste time in the early game. Well, they most definitely do not. This is more than likely going to rest at the feet of Vita King, so make sure you guys are paying attention to that Monty. Where do they want to try and push this? Even if it is Ghost Pressure, they might just have him stand there and stare at some people to try and pull a few bodies. Me. On second guess, second gander, really. He's got that He's got that case on him. As well as the shield dropping in right now, and all right into oh, the oh, Legion oh. mine. Good counter. A very intelligent placement here from G2 Attack and Doki, and Doki's going to take down Vita King. That's the power of Legion up against Monty. Such a good read from G2 as well. And now FaZe are in the same position they were before, but they were betting more on the Monty to be the one to break this stalemate with that Goo Mine then combo into Doki's kill. FaZe are basically in the same position they were in round one with Uno bottom white, Doki inside of the site, Alamo adding a dimension by Brown Stairs, but they don't have the kills flying their way. They don't have the Monty working out. Doki's the one wreaking havoc on the freezer push, and now Alamo is getting in on the fun. 5v2, Doki might just hear the next drop, pulls out the super shorty, one pump, two pump, 4v1, 3v1v2 for Souls. Might just find another. Sees Uno behind the shield, but he doesn't need to peek. He's just got to wait out the remaining seven seconds, but just for a little bit of confidence, he'll take the gunfight and tie the game. Listen, Doki might be short, but damn, that was a big play. Let me tell you, 
standing tall in that regard right Cast there. Cast a long shadow, that man. Absolutely, yes, he does. And uh, I mean, I, you do have to kind of strike against phase right here. The IQ, guys, let's make sure we scan things and see where goo mines are and stuff like that. That round was completely solvable. You have the equipment to be able to do this. And also, just to put it out there as well, goo mines aren't invisible anymore. True. You could simply look down the hatch and go, that is a goo mine, and you could remove it from play. But they didn't do that. And it really, really injured their play, uh, or rather their uh, strategy going into that round. It all rested on the back of Monty, dropping down that hatch, applying pressure over towards Coffee, and Doki got to immediately slice this guy's head off because he has to put the shield away to get rid of the goo. And you talked about reminding people that G2 are human earlier, that they don't always make the right play, that they do make mistakes. And I think FaZe are very similar. I think G2 play with a lot of emotion. They play with a lot of confidence and they can be, dis be disciplined as well. But as Ian said, these are the closest we have to actual rock stars in Rainbow Six, yeah. not just because of the results, but because of the big personalities we have on this team. FaZe aren't a team of big personalities. It's a lot of guys who are exceptionally good at their job and show up clock in make a great show of it clock out move on that's phase clan but at the same time they are also a very human super team because against lows in previous matchups like I said earlier, 95% of the map is drone, but sometimes that small 5% can get phased. Same thing against SSG earlier in the group. Probably one of the most shocking losses we saw was SSG able to not only beat phase, but beat phase 2 0. Yeah. It was a similar story. SSG performing very well, don't get me wrong, but also finding phase in one of those 5% moments that end up costing around. For you would think the Brazilian super team might end up winning. And there, a goo mine on the floor below freezer hatch. You're right. It is something you could check. It is something you could find, but it's another one of those maybe 5%, 10% moments that can still cost phase around. But like Jack said as well, this is a team that learns and learns damn fast. Yes, they do. So if we see an IQ again, maybe even in the future of the tournament, I'm reasonably confident Cyber's going to be checking that floor. Yeah, absolutely. Just make sure you got to... I mean, at the end of the day, man, you got to do your job. You know, whatever your ability is, whatever you're bringing to the table in the round, you have a task that must be accomplished. And that time around, it just wasn't done. And you have to keep people, you know, honest. You ha you need to make sure that these things are happening. So, unfortunate circumstances befalling phase, but nothing that they can't get around. I mean, for God's sakes, they've already got two rounds on offense here on Cafe up against G2 of all people. They've got to at least be happy about that. Yeah, and as the desk said, this is also a map that G2 love. So we should be getting the best of both of these teams oh, on these sides. My boy, I get to see him. When's, when's the last time we saw Jaeger? He's not in a good <laughs> spot right now, so we don't get to see him all that much, but my baby boy is here to play. Nah, I'm sure we'll have this point reiterated multiple times throughout the tournament, but without the oppressiveness of nades, Jaeger's unfortunately fallen by the wayside, well, but Mine still well. enjoys a very nice pick rate, I will say, but we do get to see him again. Benji Master. 0-4 oh, at this point said, I need the 416. I, it's calling to me. I can hear it echoing in my mind. I need that legendary weapon. We'll see how it goes. Benji went 0-4. Oh, 416C started talking to him like the Green Goblin mask. <laughs> I was going to make that joke, and I was like, you know what? I'll leave it be. He said, whoop. I said, oh. He has rotated back to the freezer position, though, so pulled a little bit back along that top floor. It is not a top floor defense. It's a reading room defense. It doesn't change the fact that Cyber on that top floor might just have a little oh, bit of an Uno. opportunity going his oh way. Oh my god. But Uno with the drive by opening pick for G2. I was going to say, Uno, do you like fishing? And the answer is yes. And he's going to catch the biggest bass you've ever seen in your life. It's Cyber. That's a trophy fish if I've ever seen one. 50 pound monster. Oh, KDS. A little topsy turvy there. Flying in like Spider-Man on the top floor. Nobody else home though. This G2, I mean, they've kind of already gotten the job done. They take out Cyber, they can kind of peel back. There's only a minute remaining. Yeah, you can rip up the floor as much as you want, FaZe. We're more than likely just going to set things up on these cross angles and play things like Pillar. That's yep. exactly where I was going to go. And Doki already standing here, waiting FaZe to try and jump, uh, jump down and deal with this hell door. And the players inside of the site whenever the attack gets top floor control on reading room, even with 40 seconds or 30 seconds left, if you have a good buck, he's gonna apply a lot of pressure to anybody playing inside of the site. And that's why you see G2 playing inside of Pillar. Oh, he didn't, oh no. This is what I'm talking about, guys. These small moments, these lay round moments when FaZe get anxious, feel that they need to move, oh, and they go drone. These players in key positions. Doki ends up finding one. Sure, he's traded out, but he's solidified oh. the advantage. Never mind. 
Souls doesn't just find one, it's two that go the Thatcher's way. Ten but seconds. Alamao with 10 seconds, still inside of the site, starts rotating away. Virtue falls as well. The round's gone completely on its head, and Benja finds his first. But the, as the bomb has gone down, the diffuser on the floor, and you'll push forward. KDS has that vertical angle and can shut it down. Phase regain their lead. It was an SOS after Doki gets that initial frag, but Souls was there to do the, exactly that, save them. Two big kills coming out of him as he takes out Doki and the Brown Stairs player, also able to convert that into a third, opening up the floodgates for FaZe as they walk in through Hell Door and they get that plant down inside of Reading. G2 not having the capabilities to work their way back in due to all of that vertical pressure that Carter was talking about. When your buck gets implemented upstairs, you want him to rip and tear as much as you can to open up all of this flooring and make life a little bit more difficult. Even the last kill coming via verticality. So very well done from FaZe as they guarantee at least an even half here. Such an excellent recovery, especially after misdroning Doki, not checking that pillar position. That could have been it. It was a 3v5. It very well was it until Souls that two rounds in a row he's got a 3k now to be fair the first time was a 1v5 so three impactless kills matched in the next round by the three most impactful kills of that round indeed speaks to the depth of the roster right there also mvp of series one earlier souls eight and five right now again three of those kills impactless but we know what he can do we know he can make it work we're not questioning also, Souls taking over the top slot for FaZe right now on their squad. It was Handy before the game that you and I casted, and now Souls sitting at a 1.17 with Handy at a 1.15. So, very well done from him. As he's mostly been playing Ace and Ward in this event. Benja on the Soulless. Hasn't had the greatest start to Cafe, but that doesn't mean he's going to slow down anytime soon, does it? No. This is the SI23 MVP we're talking about right now, and a player who has started to come back into his own after a little bit of a period of uh, just a little bit of mediocrity. Not that he's a mediocre player, but we all go through ups and downs, peaks and valleys. And Benji going into this tournament a little cool, just a little cool. And while he's a little cool in this match, it doesn't mean the confidence is diminished whatsoever. He's looking around for these drones. We know he's done damage to FaZe's intel game. We saw evidence of that on this previous top floor defense. And if he can do it again, if he can get them down to three, two drones going into phases execute, he'd have done more than enough impact to make up for missing a kill. It's definitely. Good way that you guys can look at drone economy in general is not only the fact of, oh, well, they have less drones, they can have less information. You can look at it as a aggression meter. The less drones they have, the more aggressive I can get because they're not going to know that I'm doing this. And that's more than likely what G2 are looking into. So you can get that soulless. Oh, souls, what a find. And that's just keeping your head on a swivel. They knew that that verticality was coming through and that there was an off chance that somebody could occupy it. And sometimes you just swing into the proper angle. It's going to be a find onto Benja. He's down five kills in comparison to the one that he's picked up. But this guy, souls, man, he is on a heater today. Cyber gets a lot of the attention. But souls, as you said, now taking the top spot away from Handy. A day to show up against your rivals of Brazil and now against the world champions. Such an excellent showing on map one. And in round six as well, to try to get phase this 4-2 half. The same mural windows as before. There were no small parts cybers undoing in that 1v2 are facing phases attack, Sam. Everyone from phase on that side of the map, but again, souls, 3K, 3K, and now at least a double. Doki knows he needs to get a little aggressive, that he needs to start denying some of the space, not by taking gunfights, but that's what he'll do anyway, just by denying that initial space. So as FaZe start pushing up, Doki starts fighting back. Oh. Uno with the two-piece. He's shutting the round down for FaZe. He wants that 3-3. Three, three. And he's found his way into Freezer. And is Uno aware of this? He's going for the flank, spots the player, misses the shots. Does Souls react in time? No, he doesn't. Diffuser now dropped. Handy's got to recover. Sees the player running through Christmas, is able to cut him down. But 10 seconds left. Not enough time to plant this Diffuser and nearly not enough time to find these two G2 players who, with conservativeness and grace, bow out of round six to get the 3-3 three, three half that they fought desperately for. Well, that's two successful defenses on the top floor, I do believe. Yes. Which is just impressive from G2. We're at a crazy 26%. <laughs>
Definitely changing up the fate for that top floor site. I definitely still am not uh, the biggest fan of it, but you can definitely see how they can make this tick, especially uh, for Doki. I think Doki definitely being the uh, straw that kind of broke the camel's back initially, uh, opening things up and making it to where Uno, oh. Honestly, never mind. I'm gonna take it all back. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't get to see those uh, from our perspective initially. Uno kind of just put FaZe in a body bag right there. That's my fantasy player right there. <laughs> Uno is the one indeed. Now G2, they're gonna have the helm on offense. I'm interested to see how this goes for them. I'm as well, and I'm just, I'm just happy that we have a 3-3 three, three half. If you were hoping for the best possible matchup, the fact that nobody's breaking away the victor from this half, excellent. I would not have it any other way. But we'll see how G2's attacks are. Again, this might be FaZe's pick. It's a map they are certainly comfortable on, but G2 are as well. An incredible Cafe team inside of Europe and internationally as well. If you thought FaZe's attacks were impressive, We'll see if G2 has the right stuff to make them work. We're seeing very early Grim Presence. We saw a little bit of that from FaZe, but it, they weren't really reliant on those bees, were they, Sam? No. The first round, G2 bringing him immediately alongside the Nomad and the Grimlock. I'm a huge fan of this. A lot of crowd control bring uh, brought by G2, and it's something that can make your life really difficult as a defender. Even something as simple as those crack stingers. You know, at first glance, it's like, oh, I shoot, you know, I shoot it once, it breaks. I just spray a little bit, a bit, a little bit across the ground. I can get rid of the majority of them. But sometimes in those crunch moments, they can be such a thorn in your side to try and clear things out. Nice little find there. Is you always want to shoot the lead one, Carter. That's the thing about the track stingers. If you get the lead one, it won't continue to. Add to the pile, so the shout there is are able to deal with this. Cyber's also going to rotate over here and try and assist with getting rid of some of these track stingers. And Benja, for all of his efforts, has a natural self toss at him. That's going to be the only one on the defense utilized already. So good baiting out of that utility. He plays patiently on that window. Five drones gone for G2. We'll see what value they can get out of the remainder. Oh. Now, three drones. But a powerful camera for Vidaking sees the ram now creeping up through Christmas. Z ping as well to give that in intel. Doki cut down by Cyber, but so quickly traded by Uno. Really coming into his own this match. Of course, we know how good of a player Uno is, but sometimes players like Doki Ben just steal the show a little bit. But this has been a very, very good tournament out of Uno. A player who, much like his demeanor often, can find himself on the back line. But Souls 2, you could easily say the same. Brings it to a 4v3 for FaZe as he's slowly creeping his way back along that top floor. And Cyber's just got to rest here. He knows Alamal's more than likely holding this angle, so he's just going to stand here. B's out. That almost definitely marks Souls. Oh. Oh, he shot it too far. I thought he shot it at the door frame. That was gonna land like a foot past it, but no. Oh, Alamout, he knows that he's there. Now B's in this fight. A little difficult. Alamout's gonna get tagged up, but they'll finally be able to get him off that top floor. But I think FaZe have done enough here. They've already gotten rid of the buck. There's no more soft destruction, all except for Alamal with that secondary bailiff and Benja with the secondary super shorty, but it's not gonna happen as fast as it would with that skeleton key. So now, very minimal time remaining for them to try and solve this puzzle. And then there's Handy playing inside of Hell. Oh, Virtue just pushes up, but he doesn't check the corner. This is still a common angle sometimes for defenders to play to try to catch the attack as they drop down. So I want to see if they still check it anyway. 15 seconds left, and nobody's dropped down yet. We are using every second available, and he finds him. Virtue ends up checking the position Handy's playing. He's got a smoke. Nades, yes, detonating. The final one goes out. KDS is able to cut down Benji Master, and everything Virtue accomplished, Alamo pushes in and falls. Excellent re-clearance of Hell by G2, but the utility still firmly gives FaZe that round. Very well done from FaZe. And again, you have to give it up to Souls on the top floor. Yeah, he doesn't kill Alamal, but you know what he does do? Waste a damn big amount of time. It was great seeing him being able to convert that into uh, quite the valuable asset for the defense. A lot of pressure happening to G2, and also no identification of you know, what could potentially go on on site. They didn't have a good read on VD King. More than likely, didn't even know a smoke was in the lineup. They were able to use that to its fullest advantage in that situation. So very well done to them, being able to use that utility. Take another round away here from G2, and FaZe actually feeling that top floor site as well. Somewhere Ace is very disappointed. <laughs> 
Yeah. Do have a result from the other stream, by the way. Uh, NIP 2-1 victory over Fury. I know. Some of us were hoping for the upset, yeah, myself exactly. included, because I think Fury have really impressed this tournament. But that does mean there are at least two teams currently, two Brazilian teams in the upper bracket, where, especially after map one, and a lot of people being in the G2 camp, uh, there is a very real concern we might have not have any Brazilian teams in the upper bracket left after this matchup, given the other games we've had transpire previously. And now FaZe is looking to stay in that upper bracket alongside NIP. They do regain the lead after round seven as we moved around eight. And he hears someone walking outside a garage, throws oh. that C4, lands, oh, just on the door frame. Virtue not even phased by it. He sees a detonate in front of him. He's like, oh, whatever. That's because Virtue's on G2. True. <laughs> Nitro oh, I just got it. <laughs> oh, my God. There's no way. I didn't even know I made that. Oh, Alamau, the quick little skeleton key into the window, but Handy dodges back. Indeed. You know, the Nitro Cell just needs a little bit more angle, but it happens. No worries. But anything that they can't try and solve later on down the line with some good firepower. Doki's going to be on to the Ash here. Benjut onto the Doke as well. And Benja has been the number one player throughout the tournament so far for G2, sitting at a 1.21 radius, plus 22 right now. But damn, FaZe are constantly at this man's throat. He has not been able to breathe this event. Rather, this match, Stokio will be able to at least get one back on to Souls. That's going to be a positive boon going the way of G2. Loading mag. And they still have Alamau below in good time. I suppose I didn't think about it with the resurgence of the buck. We see the resurgence of the buck cocktail take. Something that very much fell out of favor over the past couple years, where you send that buck below in the reading and use that skeleton key to open up the floorboards below. You didn't need to, because you just had the nades from below. Mm. Makes that a whole job a whole lot easier, doesn't it? But now, with both those factors and everything going into it, Alamal moves below inside a reading, tries to push those players off cocktail, and as Virtue will attest, he has been very successful. Yeah, G2 does have to be a little sad that they don't have access to Capital because Capital is so good for the cocktail push. You can put him on something like Skylight or something like the Hell Window, and he can use those smoke bolts as well as those fire bolts to dislodge and break up a lot of the vision on the site, making your life a little bit easier when you do go for that plant. Doki, Ash Crouch Walk, and it'll work out for him. So he'll take down Handy. That cuts him down, has now taken control of White Stairs. He's fallen back just a little bit, doesn't want to push his luck just yet. There's still utility to be expended on that top floor. No E1Ds left, but you can see Uno's prep the remaining canister to be launched. That remaining bit of intel, but Doki might end the round before we even get there. He's moved up White Stairs now. A 3K, the Vita King's got the read, not the kill though. Ace denied as Alamau finds the final, but with a, just a little cheeky push up White Stairs, Doki ties the game once again. Sometimes you just gotta let Doki Song get a little cheeky with things and work his angles. And across every single moment there, he was able to find some big opportunities and rip those away from FaZe. Especially that kill on the Souls through the floor, that was a really big moment there as they were able to get him out of Cocktail, opening up a lot of options for themselves. And here it is right here. Nice little discovery, especially with those bees working their way on that top floor. Doki with a nice find as well. Walking his way up white. Just constantly able to get nice shots out from this R4C. Nice to see the R4C back in action. And in no small part, because we get to see plays like that now. Mm -hmm. I feel like, like, I get nostalgic looking at clips like that. Not even because it's Doki necessarily using the R4C, but just to see someone cracked out of their mind on the mechanics, just hitting a 4K like it wasn't even worth <laughs> hitting the 4K about. like it's 2019. Literally, baby. literally, dude. Like, is this 2019 G2 with this R4C? Like, it's just nice to see. It's just nice yeah, to see, which is why he decided to play Dokubi this round. <laughs> <laughs> we still have the R4C. We got Virtue on RAM. So we'll have that with the 1.5, arguably a better version. If you guys like your sights that much. I don't, I like the hollow better. Me too, but that's because I'm based. And that's because I suck. <laughs> you don't suck, you're just not great. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I can I always count on you. I, I tried really, really hard. Well, I'm sure FaZe will try to deal the uh, consistent level of damage they've done to oh. the drone economy. Cyber, no consistent damage as he's got to back up just a little bit. Enough to get that drone before falling back, anticipating they'll reclear their position. And shoots the drone for his troubles. As we have a bottom floor defense, Sam. 
and it makes sense as a logical consequence. We'll have a top floor clear from G2. Move their way through the map, clear it out, and hopefully if they want to match FaZe's pace, we open up that floorboard before we even hit a minute 30. Yep, we're meeting that pace, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and G2 know exactly what they want and know how to gather it as well. There's really nothing to consider on these top two floors. There's going to be solid drone play out of a couple of G2 members that allow them to move this quickly. Uh, and it's very well done. Ben just still with a lot of EE1Ds in his pocket. You still have all those Bs from Alamau too. Una's going to have the secondary hard breach here, so he'll be the one working the hash. Nitro sell out for Cyber, but nobody home for that. Another one for Vita King. And again, no one around. Cyber will go down, and he's actually over in sight of Whiskey. I don't know how exactly this happened. Actually, on second glance, it's going to be Alamau here at the top of Brown. Maybe just peeking down. Oh, oh full sprinting. Oh, but no! no way! Handy goes prone and just barely evades the 417 spray from Benja. A brutal way to remain one and nine, might I add. He had that kill in the bag. The coordination was so on point for G2. But now two kills come from just one button press from Handy. A 1v5 that stopped Benja and G2's oh. entry. Well, Virtue will find one. Beta King down, a nice shot indeed, but they can even pick up Cyber with the time and space remaining. Indeed. If Virtue is able to get this going, this will definitely be one of the ones for history, especially up against FaZe, especially for Virtue. One versus four, low HP on KDS, and he's gonna go down here, but this is gonna require a lot more heavy lifting. This R4C, we've said before, and we'll say it again, it can make magic happen in the moment. Yokai out here, good info, he knows at least one person Gonna be occupying angles. Trying to dip and dash here around Freezer. Still has to worry about that player over inside of VIP. Who's gonna give him the ISO? Neither is the answer. Cyber works his way in behind on the sink angle and will catch him from the window. Well done from FaZe to constantly keeping that pressure on Virtue. I think Alamo said it. This guy literally prone and won the round. <laughs> I'm, it's, yeah, I'm not sure exactly that's what he said, happened. but I mean, let, like, let's run this back. Of course, he's sprinting. He's got to come up off it a little bit, but still blinded, he gets that kill, man. KDS also winning effectively a 50-50 as the Dope B runs in his way. Maybe, maybe in that case, you have Uno just trying to, to press his luck a little bit and turns his back, but G2 had a very well-coordinated flood there, and just a few small things undid the round completely. Face still have the benefit of the lead, able to move back up by a one-round margin, five to four. Go back to reading room as well. We saw again a round that came down so close to the wire. So much time stalled for G2 in the early game. And by the time they wanted to plant in the reading default, the smoke canisters just burned their time away. Most definitely. And FaZe so far have been able to put some major obstacles in front of G2. The biggest one right now is how detrimental the entirety of this roster it hasn't even been one man. The entirety of FaZe has basically been the kryptonite for Benjamaster. He has not been able to get this ball rolling. He's 1-9-2, and two, folks. That means that even the other two engagements that he took, somebody else had to finish them. It's very, very unfortunate for him right now. So hopefully, fingers crossed, he can try and get something going here for himself on round nine. But don't doubt him. He's definitely not going to be letting this get to him. He's definitely going to continue to try and swing in and assist his team. Just not able to hit his mark in the traditional manner that we see, that's all. First Dokubi call goes out. You can hear the sound cues, but nobody from G2 necessarily in positions to capitalize. Well, I say that. Look at what we have. A quick flood into Pillar. Virtue burning the Aruni gate. G2 like a swarm moving their way up into mining and train. They see one slight arm hanging outside of the doorway. 5e3 as G2 take full control of the bomb site. A quick little pause. FaZe trying to gather themselves. They've got Intel on Virtue playing inside of Reading, but nobody in position to go for that retake except maybe Souls in the top floor. The vertical angles aren't great. Cyber, Cyber's able to find the next one. Alamount out down. 
final EE1D. Phase are frozen in their positions. And so Benja takes that opportunity to put the Diffuser down. Doki with a nice pre-fire. KDS now falls. The Diffuser goes down successfully. Now G2 need to fall back into their post-plant positions. Cyber in a great spot to cut off their rotation out, but nobody takes that path. Instead, they move into reading. Souls has got one, but does he know there's one tucked around the corner? Oh. Benja still goes for the peak, but Virtue's able to trade. That means it's a 1v1 now. And Cyber, he's got the hard ping. Virtue now rotating. He's got to fall back. Oh. Cyber doesn't flick in time. Virtue indeed does not lose those. Again, another round down to the wire. But nobody, nobody can take the lead on this map. It is neck and neck. Both of these teams looking so solid, constantly coming down to the wire in just a split second. Mechanical difference there, making all the difference. What a find here from Virtue as he worked in his way in through library, but another just beautiful moment there for Souls on that retake. Able to find two big kills, and especially that duel onto Doki, that was nothing, you know, such a difficult moment there for him to try and win out. And obviously, Ace, worrisome there after G2 was able to kind of bullhead their way into the site. Find that plant. Things a little bit more complicated for FaZe than they exactly wanted off rip. But again, the retake, not too shabby at the end of the day, given the circumstances. Now for round 11, it's going to be FaZe and G2 all tied up. We're headed to mining and dining, and this obviously asks, what are we going to do on this top floor, FaZe? How are we going to try and hold things down? And well, more than likely going to be Cyber on this dock. Cyber on the dock, but also we have Alamo on the Blitz. I was just thinking about this. It was a 3-3 half, but FaZe winning round 7, they have been able to once the lead is even, 4-4, four, 5-5, four, five, five, they've been able to win every round after. They've kept the lead they acquired at the start, even if it takes two rounds instead of one. So if G2 want to win this in regulation, they've got a very nice drone right there in the reading position. Of course, it's shot. They also have Alamau on that blitz. Can move in very quickly. I have to imagine, where is this rush going to come from? Is it going to come from the mining window? No, instead on white stairs, Sam. Do you have KDS in the area? You gotta remember that shield once he starts sprinting very chunky very loud and here we go ee1d with the goo mines he'll get the second one but obviously it's a telltale sign of what's to come the blitz really wants access to this stairwell virtue's gonna try and assist with the top of white stairs at a bare minimum but uno's already gone down phase of already gotten a pick almost a minute off the board doki gets a big kill here as ben just worked his way in between the two sites the fuser drop though alamo struggling with that engagement kds is able to get the bullets around the shield doki evens it up but again souls 15 and 9 so far. He puts G2 back on the back step, moving further backwards, losing control instead of gaining. Virtue might win once, but in round 11, it doesn't go his way. Ben just stuck inside oh. the site. There's one. Nice little pop. Doesn't have intel on these remaining players, though. A general knowledge that KDS might be in laundry. And that's where Alamal fought him earlier. We know KDS has not moved from that position. But then just gotta bait these movements. FaZe are not going to move. Instead, they're going to peak. Match point for FaZe. 16 and 9. Souls cannot be stopped. And this cafe looking more and more like FaZe's map by the moment. Able to catch G2 off guard once again here. But as you said, man, Souls is playing out of his damn mind right now. Constantly at the neck of G2, suffocating them out. What a find there from Handy as well. As he practically pulled a 180 to take out Uno as he swung through that window. And Souls, look at this shot right here, folks. The mechanical prowess of these players will always consistently blow me away. A nice find there off that info game from the defense as well to the wall. And another funny thing, remember that Monty round where that one goo mine threw FaZe's plan off kilter? The game would be over if they won that. Indeed, but then as well. G2 go for a rush. Alamau hits a goo mine, and it doesn't directly lose the round, but Virtue had used all of his flashes. EE1D goes out. So much utility expended. Not all of it, but a lot. And while they committed afterwards and made it very close, it still telegraphed it to FaZe. That one goo mine, they had the element of surprise. If he doesn't hit it, I'm not saying they win the round, but because they have to pause, FaZe just have a little bit of time to realize what's going on, get into their positions, and then react now that they know what G2 are likely going to do. Absolutely. I'm such a negative Nancy. Right after I was like, yeah, they would have won the game already. Duh. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, man. Oh. Uh. Listen, in, in my household, it was you do it right or you're just wrong, you know? Like, yeah. When you grow up with that mentality, right? Phase. Oh, trying to recreate here. Level we're seeing. What was up, buddy? Five drones left for G2. Four drones oh. left. We're not even 30 seconds in. Oh, Mons is walking his way through. Wow. I don't know if that was EDDs on the follow-up there or what. Goodbye. Oh, Alamo. I don't care who you are. You are so dead. It's not even funny. And G2... Alamau and Benja are just falling down. Uno will be able to at least pick up Cyber, so some semblance of security for G2 to try and pull the wool over FaZe's eyes and pull this into an overtime, but they're gonna have to try for something pretty drastic here from the bakery side. Look at the utility FaZe have. Shifting. Exactly, it's shifting. They know it's likely going to be a bakery execute given the Monty. Two drones left for G2. This is How are you good. meant to bring this man count back? Uno was able to get one. He caught Cyber rotating across the bakery wall. But how are you supposed to get this when all of phase, every remaining defender is looking your way? And a small sliver in the bakery wall, Sam. They might be able to vault or crouch through, but they don't have the standing hole they wanted. Yeah, we have to see this. Oh, no, you're absolutely right. They're going to have to use the left-hand side of this. It has some breach, and yeah, you might be able to crouch through that as well, but definitely not the breach that they were going for. It looks like it's going to be a horseshoe plant here, Carter. That's what they're looking to try and grab. Got Benja it. getting flirted with here, but it's going to be Doki that takes down one. Okay, G2, the moment has now arisen. You have a minute remaining to try and deal with the onslaught of FaZe. There's no way we go to overtime like this. Surely not. Everything is going against G2. It was a 4v4, phase at all the angles, but now they've suddenly brought it back. Fighting King misses the initial swing. G2 have the entry in the prep. They've now made their way in. If he covers, if Doki can cover this plant, if Benja can get that kill, how in the goddamn are they in a post plant right now? 4v4, what the hell are G2 doing? By all the odds on map one, we're going to overtime, Sam. A little voodoo magic out of G2, my friend. The stars align. What a moment here. And Doki, a little bit of a chirp in the chat as well. Oh, Cyber, so sad, he says. Is G2. Oh, he went for the reinforcement. Purposes. Uh, an insane moment right there as they're able to somehow, some way, work their way through this setup of FaZe. And remember, folks, there was so many ways that FaZe could have solved this. They had those yokais implemented. G2 removed them. They have the crossfire set up. Shots are missed. G2 find the gaps. They find the holes, and also they find the kills. I do, like, that was my immediate thought. Looking at those replays, look at how ridiculous those shots were. Yes. We're talking about 30 meters away, slivers of somebody's head poking out beneath the freezer window. Like what, like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, like... How do you even make that happen? How, like, how do you yeah. make that happen? And you only do it because you're one of the best teams in the world, and you're facing one of the best teams in the world. They're barely exposing themselves, and G2 are able to get it. We were talking about Soul 17 and 10, Doki 16 and 9 now. Uno was having a great game on the defensive half. Virtue also stepping up 10 and 8. 10 and 6, excuse me, but Doki going bar for bar, pound for pound with souls at the moment. But that was a team effort to win that one to get us to overtime. And just to throw this back, I, I want I want y'all to look at both of these scoreboards respectively. I want you to notice this one thing. Every single one of these players on each team has somebody across from them that is literally matching their exact same pace. That's what I was talking about earlier when I said phase always play up to the moment. They're always going to match your energy. And right now, that's exactly what's happening. Cyber, he's searching. He's looking to try and get another kill here, try and bring this back into their favor after losing KDS early. And speaking of losing people, that's the exact person you don't want to lose as your first pick. The Warden? No, you do not want to lose that at all. Again, Ying is banned, so that big operator is gone. But those flashbangs have become so important in the meta recently. There's six on the board for G2, as there often were beforehand, but still, those flashbangs can be very important. But just like last round, remember, that wasn't just a 4v5 that G2 needed to win. It was one that they had two drones left, and a minute and 20 seconds in, there is not a soulless in sight. G2 have no drones remaining for the second half of their attack. No Yana, no Twitch, no Brava, no nothing. 
And now Souls and the rest of the gang get to try and run amok of things here in the first round of overtime. Virtue with a find on to Souls, though. A big opportunity now presents itself to Cyber, but he's going to lose to Doki and Freezer. Vita King and Handy, it's up to you. They had some nice moments here in this round. Getting rid of all these drones, definitely the highlight here. As out. three people have fallen on the sword. They have to try and do something now. But the big issue right, is, right. Carter, is what risk can you take? Really nothing. You two have to ask for the good graces of the siege gods to try and align the stars for you as well. Just like it happened to G2 in the last round. G2 are flying blind and they've placed their faith in chance. And it's on their side at the moment to get us to overtime, to get us to this next round. Handy's got the lineup, but not through the wall. Vita King with another. He's got the close angle. There goes Doki, but one HP. Surely Virtue, he's 101 on this site before. Surely he can win it. Intel spots him. So he's got to go for the rotate. He does not have Diffuser. Vita King can maybe contest oh, no! it. He walks into a Frost Mat. Can he get himself back up? Vita King finishes him off. They're flying blind and they trip over themselves. Match point in hand, a 2v4 for FaZe. Do you know what the worst sound in the world is when you're in a clutch? Thunk, clump. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab your ankles real quick if that's okay. Snap those things in half. And FaZe snapping G2 in the two versus four right there. And as you said, Carter, flying blind. That is the highlight there for FaZe. Yes, they lose so many bodies in this scenario, but because of the damage they did to the info game of G2, they don't exactly know how they can go about this. They have to try and swing in for these gunfights and Vita King playing things out so diligently, trying to keep himself alive. I was a little worried once he chose reading on that angle after they got the info. I didn't know exactly which way that was gonna break down for him in the position that he placed himself. But the frost mat on the rotation is what does it. And you can see it on Jake's face, man. He is not happy about that one. Damn, it's, it's literally like, it's honestly like dark cosmic humor. It's like they have no drones. They somehow, somehow get a 4v2. A 4v2 with barely any intel. They are face checking and just running off intuition. They get it down to a 1v1, 1v2 and they lose to a frost man. You got so much. You were tempting fate with that round, and it came back. Sometimes you can't plan for it. Sometimes it catches you off guard. But in a game of micrometers, it seems at times, FaZe with one singular utility placement have leaped up to match point. Reading room defense chosen by G2. We heard how fervently Alamau was saying to pick this fight. As FaZe go for their full clear, they, just like G2, will look to acquire top floor control and put KDS in position to open up that floor. But do they fall to the same fate? We saw the drone game for G2, all of those drones being fed to the wolves very early on. But for FaZe, so far so good for them. Five active drones in place still through the first minute. So begin to break up some laser gates and discover what is happening on this top level. Benji Master is going to be over inside of the bathroom as he's still been quiet as well as Alamau for the majority of this game combined. 8 and 23. That is not something you see very often from those two names. Uh, it's outweighed maybe a little bit by the 18 and 10. The other great performances from Uno and Virtue. But again, this has been such a close game and FaZe have been just a little more consistent. Full reinforcements on all the walls facing Christmas. No. G2 holding passively. The a little scared there for the Nitro Cell for a split second, but Virtue hasn't tossed it just yet. Cyber still on solid ground. Minute 10 seconds remains now. This drone economy is going to matter so very much to the future of this moment. Virtue, you're putting your head in places it doesn't belong, son. And Cyber, he's gonna lop it off for you. Soul's gonna take out Uno as well. It's a sub minute, Carter. Alamal's gonna try and fight back. He's gonna get two. Benji gets one as well. The two names that we needed to see show up in that kill feed are making this moment happen. Vita King knows he's here. He's gotta bring it back with these two kills. He finds one, but he misses some crucial shots. Triple K for Alamal. 
finally bringing it back. They know he's here at this doorway as well. The Aruni gate burned. They've got such recent intel. A lot of HP at the cost of that kill on Adoki. 18 and 11, monster down. For 20 seconds remaining, they've got the vertical control. They have, do that control the diffuser as well? Yes, they do. Don't overpeak. Do not overplay your hand. Keep the faith, hold the line. One round, three minutes to see who gets map one. Four kills from Alamal when they needed him the most on that top floor. Eminem gets it done. Seven to seven now here on Cafe. Both of these teams hyper-focused, hyper-vigilant about what is about to take place, what is to come. This round's now in the past, and it was a great moment here from Alamau, but both of these teams need this round desperately. This sets up our story for the rest of this series and potentially the future of this tournament. FaZe have obviously the power position. They're gonna be starting things here on defense. They're bringing us into mining and dining for our very last round here in this snowy landscape. Writing the story is a very apt turn here. No match happens in a vacuum in a tournament. The difference between the team staying in one spot or going down to another might very well change there or somebody else's path. Nothing happens in a vacuum. It all affects each other. But when you have a match of these proportions, it's almost like a black hole. It bends time itself, it seems. If G2 go down in this series, in the bracket, same with FaZe, if they go down in this map or in the bracket, some teams that might make it might not. Some teams that might not make it might. These are two world champion caliber teams. And on map one, they have decided to gift us something special, a full 8-7 game to start out just the first map of this series. As you said, it's a mining, dining defense. We have upstairs defense from FaZe as well, holding a little bit inside a cigar, inside a stage. G2 avoided right into this very quickly. The likely contest with Cyber soon. Sam as Uno is opening up the wall right in front of him. Deep breaths, everybody. Manners maketh man. In these situations most definitely do as well. The anxiety, the stress, the adrenaline, Carter, it's through the roof right now for both of these teams. And you just have to play your game. An opportunity presents itself. You cannot be shaking. And Cyber, well, we've seen that he's been the best in the business sometimes. Yes, indeed, the drones again. Good shout there, brother. As only two remain for G2 right now, and they're still practically outside the building. And, and yes, indeed, I don't think there's a single person indoors. I'm looking at the overhead right now, and no, there's no one inside. Benj is on white, Virtue's on the cocktail rappel, Doki's all the way over on Christmas piano, and we got Alamo on white single. There's utility going in, and those bees can do a lot of work, oh, but as Alamo go. repels in, Virtue falls. This repel needs to work, or something else has to. Peaks right. Swings left, cuts his way through Freezer, but nobody from FaZe is standing in his way at the moment. Oh. There is Cyber around the corner. Two foes locked in a battle. Uno's able to find Souls. So clinical this game. He's only good for one. Cyber swings, but where's Alamau? He's made his way into Christmas and brought us back to a 3v3. FaZe holding on to the site. Now the vertical destruction comes through, Sam. There's a singular Attackers drone existing on this map somewhere. Better be it's, important. <laughs> and it's to Alamal's name. I don't know if he goes back to it, and he will. It's all the way down in Whiskey. He's gonna drone more than likely, I would say, Helldor here, of all things. They actually have a rotation here, so let's make his life a little bit easier. He wants to at least find some clearance for them, and he has indeed. Benja's gonna work his way in. They mark the goo, and the case is gonna be on Doki. Benja, he can't find anybody, Carter. It's getting antsy. Doki will get one onto Handy. They found Benja, though. It's down into the two versus two. Doki with 20 kills. Alamo will pick up Vita King. It's up to KDS inside of dining. They're buried down on his location. And Doki with 21 goddamn kills will take the map away from FaZe and set them up for success on their own map choice. What might very well be one of the best maps. How can I possibly be saying that after one of the best maps in all of Invite this year happened earlier today? Somehow, some way, 
G2 and FaZe in Max OT have given us an absolute banger. And I, I don't want to waste any more time. We have a break coming right up, and I'm sure the desk will have a lot to say about this one.
Welcome back to the six invitational playoffs. It's G2 versus FaZe Clan with me, Ian, Fresh and Fabian. And look at this, look what it means. The world champions are all about their business here in Sao Paulo, Brazil, as they take a mightily important step towards defending their title, their hammer on the main stage this weekend. What a way to start things off. Fabian, you guys are just getting great games all around. I think we've started out with the probably, well, first game we had today was the greatest game so far. And maybe we're looking at, well, maybe at the new greatest game or the second greatest game that we've seen so far this entire tournament. What a nail biter this one is. Like so close every single round, back and forth, back and forth. And the only thing that's really going wrong are super small things. Yeah, I mean, look, we're seeing the players start to stream in behind us here and G2 taking their seats. But what a performance it was. It was a, a real band banner of a map to watch. But in particular, certain players really stepping up. You can see him there at the top of the board, Fresh. Doki doing big numbers. Yeah, he's been incredible in this game. And I think one thing that we can say about Doki and one criticism that has potentially been leveled at Doki across the last 12 months is there are times where he tries to force too many engagements. He tries to be the guy a little bit too often, but when he plays his natural game, Things tend to come to him and it tends, tends to slot together and he drops big numbers just playing his natural game, not forcing it. We saw that again today. 21 kills from Doki was absolutely sensational. Like the amount of times, especially on the attack where it's like, hey, Doki's inside. Obviously it's strategically, you know, planned, but where he's just found himself inside, getting those entries, but also the positions he's getting the entries in. He's had an excellent game. He's feeling it. He's feeling it. And this, this is the thing. The stars align so often for him. When it doesn't, however, things can go a little bit rougher. But today, incredible performance. When we take a look back at the map as a whole, despite it being, you know, very entertaining to watch, there were a lot of micro mistakes made, uh, being made across the board, Fabian, but they, they were being punished. Yeah, that's the thing. With these two teams, <laughs> the only thing we can see as a negative is actually the micro, micro individual decision making. Because they're both so good in the meta and understanding yes. how to play both the speed, both the, like everything, they just understand it. So the only thing we can nitpick is like super, super small mistakes. Take the last round, Cyber goes out of the freezer where he's a safe position, manpower advantage, and he just starts wondering. And those small mistakes, yeah, G2 will bite you in the ass for it. And it, yeah, it's, it's worth saying that these are two incredibly high quality teams. Yes. That was an incredibly high quality game of teams that we watched. Had these teams have been against, I'm just gonna say lesser opponents, okay? These are two of the top three teams in terms of expectations coming into the tournament. Had either of them been against lesser opponents, they would have blown each other out of the water. And it was just the fact that they were punishing the micro mistakes of the other team being made that was de the determining factor within rounds. Yeah, both those teams are like the top three teams we're looking at. Like, we're expecting both of these teams to make it really, really far in the tournament. So seeing them this early, it's a treat for us, that's for sure. It is, and it's a treat to watch Cyber, as we said in the pre-show, but you can overlook the impact of Souls as well. Yeah, and I think that's, this is the thing. We just wanted to highlight Souls. Again, when we was on the W7M uh, Wolves game earlier, we said there's a player that's been on it that didn't deserve to be on the losing team. Souls didn't deserve to be on the losing team in that side of the map. We talk about him generally as a backline player. Look at some of the operators played that. It was Facho, it was Echo, it was what you might consider support operators, but he's a very confident player. He takes those aggressive engagements because FaZe operate as a team. And he's dropped huge numbers again today one of the best support players in the world. And this is the games where those support players actually shine, when we have two really tight teams up against each other. And it also shows the depth of talent that we have in these two rosters. Every single player can just show up and Doki is screaming at me. Okay, I'm going to be done in a second. Give me a minute, all right? <laughs> I love how right? shouting at Fabian yeah, just up already. He, he, he never, he, he's never <laughs> quiet anyway. But yeah, all the players in both the teams can just show up and do whatever they want exactly. on the server. Yeah, and um, when it comes to attack win rate fresh, mm -hmm. these two are just elite in this meta. Yeah, and this is what builds up into that, the fact that these two teams are two top teams, and that had they been against lesser teams, they would have won quite convincingly. Both teams against another top team in the tournament achieved a 3 free attack split onto Cafe, which is no mean feat. I know that the stats might say slightly different and that Cafe's showing a little bit more, I won't say attacker-sided, but less defender-sided across the maps of this tournament but it's still such a hard map to attack, especially with the operators open. Both of these teams achieving free attacks is actually incredible. Fabian, you played uh, such a tremendously important role when it came to G2 raising the hammer in Montreal uh, last year. You're in you know, close proximity to them right now, albeit in a very different role. 
Do, are you sensing a similar sort of vibe, a similar sort of energy to that that we witnessed last year? Oh, for sure. I mean, we are seeing a resurgence in their mentality, right? They might not come in here. I heard in the shadows that their boot camp was a little bit rough and things didn't always go the way they wanted to. You can't see that today. G2's pick border is next. Fresh border isn't necessarily their strongest map, but there is some method behind the madness here. There's absolutely method behind the madness. If you look at G2's preference, border is their eight preference. So it's the map they really don't want to go to. You'll never see them go there realistically in best of ones. It's only a best of three map for them. However, they will pick it whenever they see a weakness in their opponent. Border is also FaZe's eighth preference map. It's the one that FaZe cho chose to leave open. So G2, we're always going to pick it based on how low preference it is. And G2 will have bod reviewed FaZe on this map. On All top right. of that, the make border, I'm going to make it very snappy. <laughs> border is one of the few maps we can look at and just look at the structure of it and say, this might be statistically defender favorite, but I don't think that the map is actually that if you play it the way you want to. So it's, it's a map that will play G2 into the hands, starting attack because Today, everyone will pick defense to begin with. All right, uh, the world champs about to guarantee their spot on the main stage, or will FaZe Clan fight back? It's time to map two with Links and Stux. Well, you know, guys, I have a treat because I have the entirety of the G2 FaZe strat book by here. But you know what? What? I don't care. We are going to the elimination chamber in map two. We are going to border Sam, and it does not matter what plays you bring. Of course, I'm hyping up a little bit, but realistically, if you have Doki dropping 21 kills, mm -hmm. Souls dropping, by the way, 20 kills, and FaZe somehow mirroring G2's performance through and through, I don't care what the macro strategy is. I don't care what the game plan is. This is going to be a bare knuckle brawl on border. And whoever wins might very well move on to achieve great heights in this tournament. Carter? What? Welcome to your first official barn burner at Six Invitational, <laughs> brother. Welcome. How's pleasure it going? To meet you. Hey, pleasure to have you. By the way, you've been kicking ass. I just want to let you know. Everybody at home should be tweeting at this man and letting him know just how great of a commentator he has been. But that's not what matters now. We're going to lend our voices, and we're about to see some fantastic play out of FaZe and G2. I have no doubt. FaZe has selected the defensive side, just as Fabian predicted. Everybody wants to play defense at this tournament because obviously this is the quote unquote favorite side, but I will agree with Fabian on this. Border is one of these maps where if you can attack it well, there's no snowball's chance in hell that the defense has a success. It's just such a map that can vary depending on the team and what their strengths are. Like he said, it's defender sided right now, could be attacker sided, could be defender sided for all we know, but it ultimately just comes down to who can actually play better in the server. And I know people will say, well, yeah, Carter, it's a video game. Obviously, it's gonna come down to who's better in the server. And I hear you, I hear what you're saying, but some maps have characteristics. Mm -hmm. Oregon, especially that basement bomb site, tight corridors, hard to convert advantages, very difficult, easy for the defense to hold. But on border, if you can take control of CCTV and you're, and you're attacking Armory Archives, your chances of winning the round skyrocket. But if you're the defense and you're defending Armory Archives and you retain control of CCTV while maybe not giving up gaps in office as well, your chances of winning the round skyrocket in turn. This map is so volatile. If you just take one room here or another room there, it might very well change the meter for who's winning, who's losing. It's like an end game in chess where one move can like send the bar up or down, oh, up yes. or down. This is, if not, this might just be the map that represents that the most in the pool. Isn't it so beautiful? I mean, what a concoction we have here with all the chemicals we have. Border, phase, and G2. I mean, this is bound to be explosive. There is absolutely no way. So, FaZe, what are we going to do first? Well, obviously, it's going to be Armory Lockers, because why the hell wouldn't it be? This top floor site is amazing in comparison to the whole rest of the, you know, area and the whole rest of the pool. All except for what I would say is Tellers. A lot of people really favoring Tellers, and Tellers have a pretty solid win rate here at this event. And actually, I'm a little surprised. Ventilation Workshop is actually the most one site, currently at 64%. Tellers Bathroom actually sitting at 50, so changed up a little bit from when we casted it previously, Carter, and then Archive. Armory is actually sitting at 55. So there's the uh, traditional triangle for you guys. If we do go to Supply Customs, obviously we got those two. What? How 
how, <laughs> in what way, where, and why, Souls, are you dead on Clash yeah. in the first 45 just, seconds? I, remember when I said we're going to the Elimination Chamber? Let's just take, let's just appreciate what just happened. Benja gets the kill. We cut to him. He is staring at a castle barricade halfway up 90, and a Clash is dead. How that happened, I simply have no idea. Cyber fights back, though, as he's contesting break room with an f not behind him. He can still hold this position and feel even more empowered to do so now that the E stairs player is gone. Handy on another very long angle. Cuts down Doki, the demon of cafe. In no small part, one of the reasons G2 got that 8-7 just a few minutes ago, but Alamau really coming into his own in round one. A two-piece to give G2 the advantage right back. Was that quad kill on Cafe the catalyst for him, Carter? Seemingly so right now, as he's found two here on the Finca. Another Arjuna Surge out to try and assist him with that health pool, making life a little bit easier. They still have a lot of drones to be able to work things out in comparison to what was happening on Cafe here, too. So they've got three implemented. Alamal continuing his drone game, but it's actually gonna be Virtue that goes down to Handy. I believe he's found him on that long angle outside of box once again. Very well done there, as he'll take him down, equalizing the man count. C4 goes out. Not detonated just yet. Remember, Alamau, as you can see, he's been playing on the main stairs this whole time. So if a hole's opened up in front of him, this position goes from relatively safe to very, very difficult to escape in a matter of seconds with one button press from Vidiking. Uno going for the rotate. He's the guy with the diffuser. But that leaves Alamau still in his position over by main stairs. He waits, Flashback. waiting for Uno to rotate. Flash goes over, blinds the mirror window. No rotations just yet. He shoots the cam. Again, his position is confirmed right here. Vidiking C4 finally detonates, but oh. it ends up giving way to Alamau. A quick re-peek, a 3K for the Finca. But Handy goes for the retake. The beepers give away his position. He gets the flame! The sound cue falls on deaf ears! A 1v2! We are so back! Just breathe. What the hell was that round? That is so insane. I, I, there's not a more distinct noise in this game, but there was so much going on for G2 that their ears just turned off. They couldn't hear it. And Handy with, I mean, what else could you ask for in a moment like that? The biggest 2K more than likely of this series so far as he steals round one away from G2. 4K for Handy as well in round one. And as you said, that this two-piece right here, man. So focused on the front, so focused on the execute. And that C4, gotta give credit to it too, sure. Vita King might fall to Alamo because of it, but Handy's able to make that flank work because of it. It's round one, and we've already seen absolute insanity. 3Ks, a 1v2. Clash dying is the opening pick 20 seconds in. I don't even, I still even know how that happened and I'm just moving on. Like, I can only process so many things at one time and if I were to try to add even one more, I would just lose it. No, my brain is actually starting to melt with some of the things that are happening because they're just, it's so ludicrous. You just, you would never expect it in a million years, but yet both of these teams, it's just so insane to me what we've been able to witness all because of these two teams duking it out in such a serious manner with some high-flying antics to boot. I mean, this is just the magical siege to be able to see with your own eyes, huh? Doki, a lot of damage dealt to him here on this top floor. Don't know if that was a nitro cell or what. No, it most definitely wasn't. Cyber, the only one that has one of those things. So probably some firepower here. Very quick play. I think there's gonna be a very fast plant here inside of Vents. Uno's gonna start this plant now. No verticality, no real assistance to really try and stop Uno here. He's gonna try and spray through the smoke, but there's really no chance. And honestly, even though Uno's died, his job's been completed and they've got great positioning here. They just need to hold out in this post plant. The glass goes for the swing. Benjamaster makes it a 4v4. Doki's still on one HP, so a 4v3, very possible, depending on how FaZe plays their cards. Some upstairs, they fall into a firing range from Benja. Two-piece, that's only as far as he'll get. Vita King going for the retake. Here's someone in Tellers, wins the fight. Another 3K. My God, what the hell is this game, man? 
Virtue might still win it though, because only three seconds left until we're beyond the point of oh. no return. And Doki just covers a little bit longer. Retaking the top floor, a huge round for G2. Oh, my heart is gonna be in shambles by the end of this series. Oh, dude, you're about to at least lose a couple years. Because <laughs> I can tell you, I most definitely already have. Indeed, me too. Doki. Dude, yep. me too. Yep. So real. Yeah, so that, real, actually. Very based out of you, Doki, because that's that's how I'm feeling right now. And let me tell you, baby, it's been absolutely magical to witness y'all play this series out so far. I love this round, especially, Carter, because G2, they don't reinvent the wheel. I despise when offenses overcomplicate things for no reason. You have smokes, you have a Monty, and you've already identified there's nobody around vents to stop you. Just plant the bomb and that's exactly what they do uno's life post plant does not matter it doesn't matter if he dies after that case goes down what matters is is you're able to get those big kills like what we saw from benja at the bottom of metal and let's talk about the way uno planted that as well because you mentioned a great point the smoke canisters the monty but look at how he plants it because let's say a monty's not there the gap still exists a smoke grenade might still get you in but one player up above whether it was kds handy i don't remember exactly who they have the angle they're starting to shoot but Uno's a thorough guy. The, all these players are thorough. But he still turns his back yep. to the vertical angle. The yes, main does. way players stop the plant on that doorway. So not only do they have the smoke to cover them as they go onto the site, Uno still turns his back, as Amonti should, just to make absolutely sure that bomb goes down and only dies once, as you said. His job is done, he can fall off. Uno's my favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. <laughs> True. Well, now Doki working his way in through detention. See if he can make phase day after school, give him a few lessons after he slaps him in this 2-0 bout. Another mozzie pass will pick up yet another drone. And so far, so good for phase is once again dealing detrimental damage to this info game. Doki will get rid of this castle barricade. Faze not wanting to give anything up just yet. It's only a minute in so far, but they've been able to identify a few locations where these players are, especially after Doki walks through the beepers and customs. KDS does have this hatch play. Oh, he runs through that timing. timing. Absolutely insane. There's no way he steps back into this, right? Oh There's absolutely no chance. Up in 90. He's flirting back and forth. Stop. Doki, stop, so stop. very patient. Oh, the anticipation of what is to come. I think he might just hold it out on metal. He has to know that Doki's more than likely occupying this. Well, dude, we have to cut away. I can't take this man. Like, I can't. The tension right there. Is he going to repeat? Is he not going to? Oh, so much. So much going on. KDS does not repeat, though, as close to the line as he's getting. They're just missing each other. Kills happening as well. 4v3 for FaZe. Do attain the lead is Alamal, firing shots into the site. Doki does fall, the player who was looking towards KDS earlier. Uno on the re-aggress, able to make it a 3v3. They've got the vertical control. Oh, KDS fights here. back. So thankful, at least we're so thankful. He didn't fall to Doki earlier. Uno breaks open the window. There's just the one my sitting there. 1v1 after 1v1. And nobody breaking away with the lead just yet. The fuse are not in G2's hands, though. They'll likely take the next 20 seconds or so to figure things out. Carter, we want patience out of KDS here for FaZe's sake. If he's patient on this top floor, there's a lot that can be done. I don't know how well he'll be able to hear that C8 all the way across. We have to worry about the clearance now. We have one working their way in from Archives. Uno's here to assist Alamo on this clear. They don't exactly know where this player is, and they're actually gonna try and push through onto Armory to get this case picked up. No one very, very low HP, and oh my goodness. That timing is truly incredible. On such low time, FaZe doesn't have to worry all that much. And those two will completely switch positions. Oh, yeah. The top East player able to pick up Uno, forcing Uno, or rather, the last G2 member, to try and drop down through that hatch. And FaZe able to clean their clock as well and maintain this lead rolling over into army, locker, uh, army lockers and archives. I'm absolutely in love with that late round from FaZe, man. Absolutely in love with that 2v2. KDS isn't directly holding the diffuser. He's sitting on the opposite side because he knows they have to recover it anyway. They could go for the kills, theoretically speaking, but given the time he figures, they'll likely make the decision to go retake the diffuser. And indeed they do. You can see him drop it right there, right on the floor. But he plays far back, and right as he drops, 
that's when G2 comes around the corner. Some might call it good timing. I call it divine providence, but to each their own. And as you said, Sam, right as he drops, literally right as he drops, Vidiking peaks the rotate because he knows G2 will be filling that space given the low time, and he doesn't need to finish the round. Just get the remaining. one. Just get the one pick. And all he did was down. He didn't even try and confirm it. Exactly. It was Five perfect. Not too risky, that not an over-assessment. Exactly, exactly, Attack Carter. That's what you want out of your pro players. That's why, if, uh, and honest, honest to God, you guys want to know why our bar is so high for professional players? Because we got to watch these guys play the damn game, okay? It's crazy. When you get to see this, whenever it happens, you're going to hold everybody else to a new caliber because you're like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> I got to watch FaZe versus G2, and you're telling me I gotta, I gotta witness this swap? I'm just kidding, <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. Truly He's referring to his stuff. Game. Yes, indeed, exactly. I'm, I'm, re I'm referring to absolutely every single one of my ranked games ever, actually. <laughs> I can't even get a drone properly placed in ranked game by my teammates. To be fair, I'm talking about drones. G2 in that last round as well, still finding themselves very low in the drone count. The Intel denial game from FaZe has been extremely strong even with Solus not necessarily being brought in this round as well, not a factor. Grim still very much is. G2 have brought Grim. I don't have the exact numbers because been a little busy and a little tense over these past <laughs> couple maps, but they brought Grim quite a few times on their cafe attacks and their border attacks so far as well. They've also got Alamo on that Amaru. Mm -hmm. Once they find the requisite intel, I have a feeling it's gotta be up. No, they anticipated. <gasps> I was about to talk about the reinforced small office hatch. Instead, I will now talk about Cyber on the Dock, who's found Virtue, the Grim, as the first pick. That's a huge moment here. And Virtue, or rather Alamo, also with a lot of damage right. dealt to him. Doki. Crouch walking antics. Is it gonna get him in trouble though? KDS right around the corner. Toki. So solid in these opportunities. So we get to witness Benja get gunned down from Handy over here on half wall. And Doki has to do double duty of fly in here, but he's immediately ripped to shreds by Vita King. Doki and Uno, the only ones to reside now across the map. And finally, somebody will die on the phase roster. Doki will get one, but he can't get another. Handy dandy behind the half wall will clean things up. And FaZe have a two round buffer. Feel bad, feel bad for Doki. Feel bad for Doki and Benja Master as they try to take the fights against KDS inside of Armory, and you see Doki trying to get some just some support from Benja Master, and he gets slapped down by Handy. Literally slapped on the Armory balcony. I see the idea for G2, and I think it's a perfectly good idea. I was going to mention before Cyber got that kill, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm curious if we'll see the Amaru go up the small office hatch, but yeah. Because we're dealing with some of the best teams in the world, of course, FaZe have anticipated that and reinforced it off. They don't want to risk that possibility of what is a very common rush. So Alamo's options, options are a bit more limited now. Really, if you want to fly into the site, it's going to be through Sandwich Window, and that is a lot easier for FaZe to figure out. So much easier to work around if you don't have to worry about that hatch, and they've got to force an opening from the hatch below. <coughs> What's this tech ball about? It's starting to build up here for G2. All these players quiet across the board. During these tech pauses, no conversation allowed amongst teammates. Don't want these getting utilized as a actual timeout. So we will be just moments away from getting back into border here, folks. But fortunately, enough, but enough for us. There's been so much action to be had throughout the four rounds we've already witnessed. And just that last one alone, a lot to process there for G2. They really want to try and handle things over from the box wall side whilst having Alamo flood in to try and deal with a handful of things that were going on, like half wall, and potentially just, you know, get in there and make things a little dirty for FaZe. Make the water a little murky, make it to where they don't exactly know what the clear path is forward, but FaZe, they nip it in the bud so unbelievably fast, Carter, especially for Vita King. He was just spraying the AR through smoke, finds Virtue, or rather Alamo, immediately with that Gara hook as he flew through the window, and then everything else is practically just the FaZe show. It looked like Ilkham's live there right in front of us. So it was practically a flawless round, all except for the one kill that Doki was able to garner in the dying moments. Could very well be a 2-2 right now at Handy not got that 1v2, but I'm sure FaZe are very grateful for it after 
both teams barely getting a one round lead and G2 only establishing that for a brief moment in overtime when they actually ended up winning that map 8-7. And now here, we had the 2-1 as you can see because of that 1v2. And now with FaZe able to string together three rounds to G2-1. Oh my God. I just, oh, oh. why are we showing this to me? Like I already expressed earlier that the tension for that one engagement was getting to me. And now we show Handy one tapping like a pixel of Benjamaster. You're getting some gray ah, hair. I am. I actually, I shouted so hard earlier, I gave myself a headache for like five minutes. <laughs> hey, these kind of series will do that to you. You can see the stress on all of these players' face. I mean, FaZe are in the lead, and look how locked in this man is right now. Dude, that's the shadows on his eyes, man. It's just like, <laughs> looks like that, that LeBron gif I tweeted of him just like bent over, just staring ahead. Oh, it's like the uh, demon mode me. Yeah, Miami Heat LeBron. Yeah. Yup, yup, most definitely, my friend. I mean, it's been one for the ages in between these two. I feel like I'm watching like the 2016, 2017 finals, where it was like the Golden State Warriors versus Cleveland. Just two teams going back to back, just taking it to each other. It's absolutely insane. Timeout now called by G2, folks. That's why you're seeing a conversation go on here. We're about 10 seconds away from this timer. Escaping, and G2 having to be all on their own, on their own map to try and figure things out. I didn't think that they thought that FaZe would be as successful as they are so far on these defenses. You also know, just because this, because of how important this game is, you know something we haven't even talked about so far? What's up? We've got Romalio facing his former team. That's how, oh, yeah. much, that's how much we have going on, how much the desk has to dissect because of how high level this game has been, how important this game is, especially when we didn't know what the results of the NIP Fury game were, when this could have been the last Brazilian team in the upper bracket. So much to focus on. We'd even mention that Romalio just happens to be Attacker facing the team he uh, left G2 for. An amazing note, an amazing catch by you as well, because that well, is okay. a very, very big. To be fair, I talked to Fabi and Jack about it before the game, but like. Yeah, but they bring it up on the desk. No, but that's exactly. But again, that's, <laughs> but again, but again, that's because of how much there is to talk about. That suddenly that personal storyline, which for some games might very well define the matchup. This is like, yeah, okay, we would like to talk about it, yes. but that's but... not nearly as fun, of, you know, as taking the pest out of Fabian and amazing. Jack. So, I, you know, I'm, listen, hey, listen, I'm they're nice already guy. both hammer lifters. I'm Come on. Nice guy. Come on, right? That is what it is at the end of the day. So, back into the action now between these two. And, folks, I said we would cross the bridge when we got there. And we have done that. It's going to be supply customs here for FaZe. This site has had seven plays through 138 rounds on this map, okay? 57% defensive win rate, so still favoring FaZe, but that doesn't mean that G2 are gonna let that go quietly into the night. It has been such a loud 20 seconds. Every, like, we've had like two C4s, we've had Selmas go off, we've had Exothermics. Oh no, we've only had one C4. I guess that's just the two impact grenades from Cyber also colliding with something. For a split second, I thought it was Helldivers 2. Literally, I'm just like, oh, cool, we're in the midst of battle, awesome. 45 seconds in and Jail Wall opened up, a lot of progress made or at least seemingly a lot of audible progress made. Utility expended as well. G2 recognized, of course, the bomb site that we're facing and stationed in a little bit of a wraparound right now. We see one oh my. side, Benjamaster. I honestly didn't even realize we were in the bomb site. And Souls just wraps up two. Alamal finds one. He's put himself on the ash this time, taking it away from Dokubi, or Dokubi, Doki, excuse me. He's playing the ace this time, but Souls. Might find two. Vitaking shut down in the process. FaZe, their defense holding strong. This is a great setup as well for FaZe. Still maintaining that top floor control. Cyber bringing himself into the fold here too. Virtue's going to make an adjustment all the way back up to Vents. And he more than likely knows that somebody's going to be on this window. He's flirting with her for just a second, but Handy's going to go down. Three versus three now. After Uno will pick him up from the custom space. He's worked his way into detention. He's actually right on the precipice of being able to have an opportunity to plant if he can find a home for this dang thing. A nice oh, shot on the souls now as well as the Fragmite has came to play. KDS, can you get it done? He cannot. Alamau with a beautiful shot out of the R4C will finally pick up another round for G2. 
Uno finding himself as the uh, second attacker to make his way into the bomb side that round, and much more successful than the first. Benja cut down unceremoniously, and Souls following up with the other player outside of Passport. So phase of a 4v3 right here because of this moment. Benja thinks he's found an opening. Souls very not aware of it, which happens sometimes, but he wins the gunfight, and that's what matters, and then prepares himself for the second, is able to shut it down. But Alamau, as you said, that round with that very quick kill at the front door, and then Uno and Alamau as the duo to end that round, both with 2Ks that round, to finish things nice. off. Excellent showing from G2, who play a very slow game. Fabian mentioned on the desk how both these teams are such masters of pace. Yes. Such masters of tempo. And I think that round is a great example. 45 seconds in, walls getting opened up. Explosives being used from both teams. Util being cleared, and then silence for the middle half of the mm -hmm. round. Benja creeps in, dies, Souls gets another, so be it. And then G2 start ratcheting up the pace as Alamout moves in the front door. Uno moves in from jail. Both get two kills, both end the round. Yeah. Both of these teams have such a storied history for all of these players. Even somebody as young as Benjamin Master, SI 2023 champion. They've been birthed in the fires of Rainbow Six Siege. All of these timings, all of these angles, it's practically their skin, Carter. They know it like the back of their hand. And we get to see it time and time again. I mean, just think about what Souls was able to do in those dying moments there, or rather in the, in the moments inside of Customs before he was taken out and just all of these different little micro decisions to bear for both respective squads and it's so magical to be able to watch round six now our last one here for g2 on the offensive side unless we go to overtime and they're looking to tie things up some gadgets found banshee identified inside of office Look at this, Alamau and Doki already going in for the pinch. I believe we saw the Ram as well. Benjamaster, yep, all the way over by East Stairs. Look at how fast they are encircling Souls in Fountain. He's really trapped. There's barely a way out. C4 goes out, does a little damage to Virtue. G2 are just making their way in. Here comes the clear. Uno going in from the east side, from office, goes for the swing, but it's Cyber with the first. Virtue's instead the one to go down. There's still a player in Fountain. Uno's not even concerning himself with him. He's looking downstairs instead. You know, I mind you, this guy has just found a kill. Souls goes one for one, and because of that kill from Cyber onto Virtue, FaZe have the advantage. It's not a clean clear for G2. It's not. Still have a lot of opportunity, but it's dwindling. This fuse implemented. Would do something for them if they can kind of just make a muck of things, try and make it to where positions like bathroom oh, are a lot more difficult to play. You never really know where these pucks are going to go either, but Vita King, he's seemingly found a gap where they're going to try and expand. And as of right now, these horizons for G2 well, are starting to go down into the night. Starting to be dusk on this roster. Oh but as soon as I say that, a little bit of sunlight here as Alamal will take out Cybernado. Pre fires through the wall off of that yellow ping. They know Handy's in the area and they're going to continue to try and mark him. Handy has to know now that the jig is up. They know that you are inside of Workshop. We know with the cross here. Carter, I'm starting to get nervous. 35 Scanning seconds for remaining for G2, and they cannot find this pick they're so desperately looking for. Reach and charge out will be very close to Vita King's location. So close, so very close, and yet Handy being fired at through a wall, a breach charge above Vita King, and they're not moving. They don't care. They have no. their positions. They feel they can cut off the attack, and they just remain. They hold fast. Vita King oh. for one, Handy with the second. Their patience pays off, 2v1, we are out. Knocked down, 4-2 half for FaZe. Not at all afraid of G2's attack. This feels like a heavyweight title fight right now with what we're seeing. The patience, the cadence, right into that direct jab. Little uppercut action there from FaZe. I absolutely love that cadence that we saw, especially inside of Workshop Carter. Not overplaying their hand. Handy just slightly adjusting his location to not be found out by that drone any longer. And then reassessing things, being able to assist once G2 work their way into sight. The crosses coming in from Workshop were just too strong. There was no way for G2 to try and fight back. And Vita King, especially from that location, with a big moment there inside of bathroom as he was able to discover that case planner.
Faze have the lead. No 3-3 three, three half, this time 4-2. to two. G2 will need to win this half just to bring us to overtime. They match at 4-2, will not be enough. A regulation 2-0. You need at least a 5-1. Five seconds to go. You need to completely dominate phase this defensive half. And I'm talking in the Attackers opening picks and the intel game bottom. and the map control. So many steps to take. And I don't think it's a shock that we see the Fenrir and the Solus brought out in this round. Obviously, I don't know if you mentioned it. Azami's banned, so holding CCTV a little more difficult, but those Solus and that Fenrir following up alongside the castle makes clearing out these roams and these setups a lot more difficult to find and a lot more difficult to push through. Yeah, I'm here for the gunplay, so... <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there was a reweave. It was kind of the whole bit we set up at the beginning. Uh, most definitely. And uh, it seems like FaZe going to add a couple extra layers to their offensive front. The Blackbeard, the biggest piece yeah. of this here. And not only that, he's rocking the SR25. Yeah, this is actually something we've seen from FaZe in their previous game against SSG. Souls likes to run that Blackbeard and play this Armory Balcony. Now, uh, admittedly, he did it to inconsistent success. Sometimes he died to the player in CCTV, oh. sometimes he wasn't. But the big difference there in that game, Souls was playing against Ash and actively playing a zombie in CC. Now, with nobody actually playing in that position, he has a lot more freedom to take a fight with Virtue playing half wall. Well, this is a terrible situation for Souls. He tried to Attack use those frag grenades to, to open danger. things up for himself to try and swing Attack across the balcony, the but instead, he's going to have to try and work things in from another angle. He'll be able to find Benjit Uno running around on this top floor, looking to see what he can do against the phase roster. They're playing patiently over here on the east side. Window open, Cyber's found his way into break. He does have that player over on bookshelf right now that he still has to deal with, but FaZe, they've already gotten the big pick, and now they can try and convert this timer into value. They're a bit stuck on this east side, though. They've tried to make an inroad already, but Doki and the rest of G2 been able to shut it down. So Vidikin goes for a different approach. We saw him by the balcony earlier. This time he moves instead into office archives. This area, FaZe getting the opening pick. Not the opening pick, excuse me. 4v3, oh. we got a 3v3 thanks to Doki's good works. And he's got the intel though. Nice little Z ping from that Monty. Goes for the spray transfer top main and forces Alamo back. Further steps retreating down the main stairs. Virtue the only one actually on the bomb site, but that's fine. Alamo's at his strongest on the Solus down below. This is a good rotation, forced it might be, but one that still might win them the game with Virtue facing almost insurmountable pressure. Handy's able to cover the cross for Vidiking to move to an indestructible floor to get this diffuser down. Alamo might be able to spot it, but yup, they've got to rotate. Handy's there waiting, and we're in the post plant. They know Alamo's coming up. They know the Solus was going to be below, so they'll watch these staircases. He starts to back up, spots the Monty. Do they know he's crossed? Handy's ready for it, at least. Opening gambit on the attack goes FaZe's way. They've got the widest lead we've seen in this series so far. Such a hard setup to deal with, Carter. Especially for Benja. I don't think that they knew that that was a Blackbeard that they were dealing with. Melee gets cut down by the SR-25. The Monty making the most of the situation as well. So much info coming in from that operator, opening a lot of different doors to our players here. And yep, nice find there from Souls on to Benja. Benja not even having anything to say about that either. And what a shot through the main wall there for Bookshelf. FaZe looking so solid so far here on border. So solid, and Sam, we've got a We've got a new member, potentially the MVP club of the map. We had G2, obviously, Doki with 21 kills, but for FaZe, we've seen two series out of them today. Yes. We saw Cyber with a monstrous performance on bank against Low. Souls, the MVP of that series overall, and for FaZe, at least the MVP of last map at 20 kills, but handy. Oh, yeah. 11 and 3 so far. The 1v2 on the defense, playing the Ash that last round, or playing the R4C at least. My brain still defaults to it. Just assuming the R4C is Ash. Me too, don't worry. But Handy still with a massive performance in that previous round. He has been killing it. Of course, this tournament so far, going into this game, he was the highest rated. And in this game, yeah, he, uh, he's the highest rated. Yeah, most definitely. Actually, after that last series that we, uh, we did, I do believe Souls took him over. But yes, he's definitely, definitely making a bid to take that crown again. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I am the top player on phase right now, sir. And yes, Look indeed, Souls has doing. the point seven team. Alamau, he's looking for a cheeky little freaky kill right here on the front. 
Nice angle, but nice drone. Yeah, able to find that at least. That's at least a good shout. Dealing some solid damage to the drone off rip here as they've already gotten rid of four. Four indeed taken down. Six drones remaining for phase. I'm sure the attack will be able to overcome that. Use those Dokubi calls they have remaining to try and find the remaining bit of intel. Look at that drone. That drone at the top of the ceiling inside of office makes up for the four lost. You can see Doki moving around this hatch, see their rotations back, but there's Souls, the man of the hour, who's able to get that opening pick. Alamo down. We saw him fighting so aggressively for front door control, and whether or not he was the, still there, he's punished for it. And Cyber might punish Benja Master as well. He's got the close angle on the window. I don't think Benja's aware of this, Sam. He's gonna hop in for him, and he no gets way. him as well. Cyber, you absolute maniac! Right through the laser gate. It's not like they're solid. You're gonna take some damage, but he doesn't care. Bench is completely caught off guard, and they continue to blow this kid out of the water. Look at this angle from Souls too. Tell his archives defense, as I'm sure many of you know, but as Uno falls back, we saw Souls cutting off a little bit of that rotation, but it's a tight angle. It's hard to make those Reloading. shots work. Talked about the Intel games and, and phases down to one drone. A lot of this is gonna be heads up. A lot of this will be ad hoc, on the fly. It's made easier by Uno being on one HP, so if that angle's gone on red, it might not work. KDS being, having fire rain down on him from up above, but look at that cutoff! Who does that? Flips out the pistol to try and get the hatch? This man is simply not human. Neither is Uno. A cyborg on one HP, he does not move as a nade, sails on by, two different players, but only one kill. Doki's retaken up above. He's trying to prevent Matt's point with this vault down back into courtyard. Oh. Nobody's planted just yet, Sam. Still time for Doki to make the play. He has the chance here. Oh my God, there's no way. Doki, he sprints into it, but Vita King immediately abandons the plant. Microseconds. Inches away, Carter. And Doki, with what would have been the biggest clutch at this tournament, you saw the patience, the recognition that he did not have to kill the buck yet. It was all there, but FaZe are just too damn good right now. They are taking it to G2 here on border. I just, I, this man. It is so unbelievably disgusting across the board from FaZe, what they've been able to produce. Moments like this out of every player across the board, and they're being so proactive about getting into the faces of these G2 members. <laughs> That fight between Virtue and KDS, I think maybe you can say Virtue dropping the hatch right there. Little risky. Doesn't know if he's got the hill. Exactly, little risky. But I think he was thinking the same thing we did. Okay, this guy probably doesn't think I'm just gonna drop the hatch in front of him. I should be able to catch him off guard. And for some reason, KDS is like, all right, I hear switching to your secondary is faster than reloading. And what do you know? I thought three steps ahead. Oh, he said, I'm gonna whip out the standard service pistol here. Literally. <laughs> like just ridiculous, man. The layers to all of this, because we talk about like layer defense as a, as a concept, right? Falling back, peeling them back. But just the layers in thought that's going on here. The amount that G2 and FaZe alike, FaZe might be up 6-2, but we saw G2 on Cafe. We know they can think ahead. We know what they're capable of. It's just so ridiculous. But right now, it is FaZe firmly in the lead. Four, not four, two, four rounds separating them, but 6-2. Unbelievable. You know my favorite thing about Sieges, man? What? It's like bullet chess, but with guns. It's, it's it, bullet chest. You know, it, it really is. It is straight up bullet chest, literally. It's so amazing. A four round lead for FaZe. G2 have to be perfect, folks. This is going to be absolute insanity. If G2 want this in two, we're gonna have to see some Herculean efforts across the board here. And it all starts now. What a damn shot. Get out of here. Out like, of KDS. Shut, just shut up. Uno didn't even have a moment to no. breathe. He didn't even have a moment of rec recognition about what just happened to him. He's already dead, laying in a grave, and so is Souls. But they've run into the Blackbeard. This was the pick that got phased the opening last time, cutting down Benji Master. Cyber also now put to one HP. 
So there's progress being made by G2. They might have lost Uno, but they've dealt damage in terms of, well, the lack of an advantage now for FaZe and HP damage to Cyber. KDS also now facing a lot, but Cyber stays alive. Alamo falls. Just a slow bit, an encroachment onto G2's territory. But now here comes the big push. One flashbang goes on into Benj's position in CC. He's holding on, but FaZe won it. Benj up. Probably the biggest moment that we've seen for him right here. If he can shut this push down, especially after being discovered, this could be the round that they so desperately need. They've already gotten another pick, and he can't get him on the rotation. Vita King will gun him down with the DMR. They now know that Virtue is in behind half wall, trying to hold things down on site. We do have Doki no. on the flank here. Is there a camera that's been implemented to try and assist with this? He'll work his way back in through break, and he takes down his single member of faith. Oh. oh, those might be the biggest missed shots inside of a round we've seen so far. KDS, he knows where Doki is, but Virtue will find him, and it's all down to Handy. Beginning and end, we started this map 0-0 zero, zero with a handy 1v2. He finds himself in the same position with 10 seconds left to give us a map three. Goes for the plant, falls off to go for the pick. C4 goes wide. It's not intended to get kills, but G2 have wasted enough time. No successful clutch this time. G2 on time. Still match point, but just one round closer to a, on a very long path. Intelli and, uh, incredibly intelligent play there from Virtue using that audio, sprinting at him, then immediately diving in behind the metal half wall so there, just to make sure that he gives him that little breadcrumb. Hey, come on over here, get off that plant for me, buddy. It works out swimmingly for G2. Now here's the thing though, we still gotta do that handful more times. And, and you said, you know, G2 have to play perfectly. And as we know, if any map just inspires perfect play, it's got to be border, right, oh, Sam? Yes. Just never, never any scrappy gunfights, never any slight missteps. Ah, I mean, we saw some slight missteps on Cafe, but as Fabian mentioned, it's a game that between these two caliber teams is going to be decided by that. But we've seen so many rounds that really just came together by chance moments. Huge gunfight wins, smart, small decisions that end up giving the team the victory. But Border inspires anything but perfect play. It inspires moments like that. Moments to remember, but not, not necessarily moments to wish for. Most definitely. My friends and I, back in the day when we were, you know, doing things in T3 and making strats and doing all that kind of stuff, we used to refer to this map as the catalyst for catastrophe, Border. Or rather, Carter. <laughs> I'm calling you the map now. That's how much we've talked about it. I mean, it. listen, I'm <laughs> like, like Border. My, my am, I per am I perfect? No, but I make for some good moments. Yes, you do. You most definitely do. My second son, his name, it'll be Border. <laughs> shout out. Shout out to shout, Border. Shout, shout out to, to Border, border Stewart. Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you too, brother. Oh, man. What a series we've had. We've had the honor of casting as well. It's G2. I think walking into this, they thought that it might have been a little scrappy, but they could take it in two. And I guarantee you, they did not think FaZe was going to do this oh, to them no. here on border. But G2, as we know, they do not let this pressure get to them. To see that how this stress test goes, pushing the limits of the Samurai is FaZe. They've been continually on this death roll. Constantly chomping at the bit to take out G2 on this map. They have quite a few opportunities still ahead of them in order to do so. Good start for FaZe to open up that long haul position, but of course, Doki still fills the space. He's got to worry about the CC window and the doorway. That's why he's worried about it. Soul's no longer on Blackbeard. Doki spotted. Z-Ping goes out. Will Souls take the engagement? Will he expose himself? Knows he's still there. Goes for the fight. Doesn't secure it. But Doki's put in a difficult spot. He heals himself all the way back up, oh. but he's got prone behind the desk. Simply too much pressure to deal with. Not Doki's fault. That was a triple pinch from FaZe. And KDS breaks open the wall. Rips Uno's life away from him. The soul leaves his body as the G2 advantage is quickly and quickly escaping into the rear view mirror. Souls with a third. 
will quiet down for just a second. And as Alamau creeps up, he gives away his position. Three and nine, make it three and 10. A flawless round for FaZe as G2's pick was anything but comfortable, dominant, no, unless your name is FaZe Clan. I can't believe it. We're headed towards a third map in between FaZe and G2, which may be building up to be one of the best series that we've seen at SI in quite some time. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Night Haven Labs, but after this break, we will have a little bit of an analyst desk to do exactly that, break things down. We'll see you in a bit. Dude, he's seeing both members inside of 90 hallways, so now he would make that call to his teammates and try to shut that down. There was no way you could do anything, because as you pointed out, Rexen saw both of them. So somebody from Sonics will be positioned over towards Pillar to catch them. Rexen can get the other kill from the same angle above, and that's all she wrote on that round. Sonic's far more formidable on their entry in round number two than what we saw in round number one. And Wolves just didn't really have an answer for this. Mowgli dying to the hatch above. Yeah. Definitely seemed like he wasn't that inclined to fight it. And as he's trying to run away, he exposes himself in probably the worst way humanly possible. That's sloppy. For a player like Mowgli, you need him. He's one of the greatest tools that Wolves has to go up against most of the best gunners in the world. If Mowgli dies early, Wolves lose a ton of fragging power. He's gonna be playing as a homie in this round, so it is incredibly important that not only does Mowgli not die early from a kills yeah. perspective, but also you want to be able to position those Kiva barriers so that you can defend against wherever the execution of Sonics is in through. And this actually was an issue against WCM earlier where it was Deadshot often playing the Assam and would fall to a spot, like trying to spawn peak. And you, you know, you get two key barriers, you know, throughout the course of the prep phase, you get two and a half to be exact. So if you die to a spawn peak or trying to do one yourself, you will miss out on the three following keeper barriers and not utilizing that operator to its full potential. That's not really what you want to be doing. What you do want to do, however, is have some fun when you play Rainbow Six Siege. And there is no more fun and enjoyable operator to play than Blitz in my world. Geo usually plays the Monty, but occasionally he'll dabble in some Blitz play. This round will be one of those. You combine that with the Lion, with the Capital, and the person that you're going to go up against, likely the Warden, later on this round, is not going to have a very good time. Shinka, behind a shield, has a little bit of cover. When Blitz goes in, things are not going to be great for him. And it's Geo to come in and get the first pick. It was a little bit sloppy, but he makes it work. Gives his position away with that proximity alarm, but that's okay. Mowgli dies as well. What did we say the key was here? Hmm. Not have Mowgli die early. Well, hmm. first 45 seconds is quite early. No Izami, no Kiba barriers, and again, one of the best offensive threats that you have from Wolves. We'll have to wait for another round to find his very first no. kill. I don't know how G how Gio got away with that, but did you see the look on P4's face? That frustration <laughs> as it starts to set in. And if Sonics can keep breaking the spirits of Wolves and get in their heads, I imagine an early timeout will have to be burned by Wolves, which again, as we saw in map one, will greatly help the pedestrian. Oh boy. You put Gio, an old man and a young man operator, and all of a sudden he will find the magic. Two kills in the round, shutting down the extension of the first person roaming up above Gio. He's not done yet. Death shot on the fire now. Things are not going well for Wolves. Gio walks in, but maybe bites off a bit more than he can chew as Bibu looked to secure, but Gio's down, but not out. He's still technically retrievable. He doesn't bleed out because Rexon gets the final two picks. That's a flawless round from Sonics as they only look like they're improving. Good news for Wolves. You can't get much better than a flawless round. So, there will likely be a step back for this team. And what? Hmm. I am hmm. so smart. Come I. On. It's almost I like it, you've been casting for a long time. Uh, coming up on seven years. Damn. Seven years of Rainbow Six. Pretty crazy to think, right? It's crazy, yeah. Wolves it's... have called a timeout, and Lilun does not look happy in the slightest this is a very demoralized roster right now i mean i, I get it and, and you, you know you come into this riding the high off beating w7m having high expectations finally beating that seeming like curse that's upon your team that you often get grouped you don't really make it to main stage and there's just this one game between you and the crowd essentially right yep. and that's where you want to go of course there's a lower bracket run like possibly here for wolves or sonics whoever loses 
spot. You've already lost the first map. You didn't really show up. You're not awake in the server. Things are not going the right way for them. And again, they're probably tired. They're playing under difficult circumstances. Playing two best of threes in a day. And the first one taking you a long distance. It's hard to ramp up for the second one. And it does look like Wolves are a bit overwhelmed. Yeah. No best of three is the same as the next best of three. Mm. That's true. But that was a grueling series between W7M. I can only imagine the fatigue, both physically and yeah. mentally, that Wolves are currently going through. Not only are you playing your first match on the first slot, which Attackers means being up really early, but it also means going up against what could be, in theory, the strongest team here right off the rip. It's your first match. There's a lot at stake. And then you play a really strong looking Sonics, which, you know, they had a quote unquote easy group. We have to kind of bring that up because you never know just how strong a team is based off, you know, we got to see them against like a really good team. And for Sonics with this roster, with this iteration of lineup, I would say Wolves is that first big challenge. And so far, they've been looking mighty fine. I also want to point out, speaking of Ampy earlier and his vibes, he is for the first player I've seen who is so excited about fist bumping the coaching staff behind him before his team is next to him. Most coaches kind of bump you on the shoulder like, hey, I also exist. And he's like, you get one and you get one and you get one. He's loving it here on LAN. It's a kid's first event, right? He'll lose that with time. He'll become a bitter, oh, cynical man. player, just <laughs> like so many of you. Uh. But yes, that enthusiasm is infectious and I have no doubt it helps keep this team up. There have been times before where with Gunner on the squad, conversations around Sonics and the struggles that they've had from time to time, would be based on the mood. Mm. It's no surprise that there are some players on that squad who can get quite frustrated with the results, and it could potentially sour the team environment. It's something that they, their players have actually talked about before. Maybe not to great depth. Having somebody like Ambi, who is just so incredibly excited to be here and whose positivity seems to be endless, well, that surely has to have an impact on this team. It's not gonna be, the, it's not gonna be a huge difference maker, but in a game of inches, a couple inches can make all the difference in the world. And I think for somebody like Ambi, he's genuinely pumped to be in the position he's in. And it's great to see it. He's from, I don't care what team he's on. <laughs> I don't care what region he's from. Seeing somebody like that, and a lot, honestly, a lot of the APAC teams are kind of in that yeah. same boat where they just look so excited to be here, especially some of the teams that don't get a lot of international competition, that they get quite pumped. Now, Geo takes out Mowgli as two separate players from Wolves. Swing on to him, P4, right? I never like to cut off Parker, but welcome back to the best tournament on earth. Welcome back to Sao Paulo. Welcome back to SI. It's the playoffs where FaZe Clan take G2's map pick. This one is going to a third. And I'm sure that you watching at home are absolutely delighted about it because we don't want this one to finish anytime soon. My name's Ian Chambers alongside Fresh and Fabian. Fabian, you surprised? Yeah, I would say so. I think we saw quite a poor display from G2, which is surprising to me, especially on their own map. We were expecting a lot more from them, and they just did not seem to have the right tools today. Fresh, do you think that FaZe maybe left Border open for a reason here because they played that map exceptionally well? Yes, I think so. I think we queried it in the map band, certainly me and Fabian did, where we said, why didn't they leave Conchula open and start Conchula at defense? If they knew they were leaving Border open, there was a good chance that G2 would pick it. G2, of course, did pick it. Even though it's a very low preference map for G2 because it's a low preference map for FaZe as well. They've done that for a reason to try and counter strat. I wonder if the fact that Romalio is was previously on this team, he was maybe trusting a little bit too much his knowledge of this team when he was on it as to how much they didn't like Border and G2 have maybe got baited into that map pick a little bit. Mm, even when G2 were successful, it didn't feel like their round wins were strategic ones. Yeah, no, I don't think they were. There was a couple of rounds where they took a, a, a few calculated risks, I would say, especially the, the Monty plant over on the Vents workshop side. Um, and they managed to scrape a couple of rounds together. And then one round where they pulled back like a 2v4, I think it was. It was nothing that, in my mind, they strategically out fought. Like, they, they fought and they were better strategically than FaZe. I think FaZe were better across basically every round. And to build on to your previous point, Jack, I think it it might have been that G2 were expecting them to not practice the map at all. And it, it's kind of like, maybe FaZe didn't have the experience because those gaps that G2 know exist against most normal teams, they didn't seem to be there today. So it could be that maybe FaZe don't even have the experience and they just had one of those maps where everything aligns because G2 are expecting too much from them and they didn't provide that level that they were expecting. 
I, I think that they had a great map from base Saido. Handy especially stood out really well. It feels strange, doesn't it, to be critiquing G2 at this stage, just because we've We've obviously seen them just be so dominant and successful up until this map. When it comes to things they can improve on, or maybe specific players, let's talk a little bit about Benja. Yeah, I think that Benja Mouser have had a really rough start, both to map one and map two, he hasn't really been showing. And until, well, this game, he's been their highest rated player in the team. So I wonder what is going on, because maybe, I, I don't think that I was gonna see his uh, poor team farmer, because that would be rude, wouldn't it? But that's what it looks like right now, that he can't really step up against these better teams. I know he can, I mean, he took the kill record in last mm -hmm. SI. Yeah. Expectations are high. Now he needs to live up to that again. There was a narrative that I said in the, the last post map again about Doki that he maybe forces it a little bit too much at times. When watching Benja State, it felt like Benja's forced it a little bit too much. There was a couple of rounds on Cafe, a couple of rounds on Border where he's maybe trying a little bit too much and a little bit too hard to get those skills and to pull himself out of it. So I just want to see him settle in, play in the system. And it's very similar. All these G2 players are very similar because of the system and because of their talent. If they don't force it, it tends to come to them. You know what's crazy? This is my first SI when it comes to in the studio, uh, here in the in the, in the the playoffs. And it's so weird when you're talking about the players and they're just right, right there. I don't know how you do it. They just start and listen to us just Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they right? can focus on their own <laughs> thing. We can smack talk them as much as we'd like. And That's it. What are they going to do about it? True. Uh, G2 have now lost their first map here in Sao Paulo, which is, it could be a monumental moment for their journey here, Fabian. You know, there's one thing, there's this little rumor going on that Carl choked against Brazilians. Yeah. Alamo choked against Brazilians and he stops being able to in lead. Is that a little ghost we're seeing coming back? Maybe it's been hiding? Who knows? I don't know. It was certainly one of the things after they got over the line on Cafe, because it was a big question, I think, for a lot of people coming in, is the last two international losses G2 had had was in the in Copenhagen and in Atlanta against Brazilian teams. Could they get over the line? Could Carl, could Alamal get over the line with the eye gelling? They got over it in Cafe, and like you say, that, that doubt is just... Was it just a one-off? It's time for them to prove it now. Well, this is the thing, you know, momentum, and you know this better than anybody, Fabian. It's a beautiful thing, so it can really switch the dynamic once you take that first L. It can definitely change the momentum, but both of these teams are so experienced that I don't think that one map loss will toss them in any way, shape, or form. They will just come back from this. G2 know what they have, and it wasn't like one or two players played poorly, and it was just kind of an overall thing. Like, the team didn't seem to work so great. They know that sometimes that happens, Toss it aside, move on to the next map, and just accept it, because that will happen. Especially against these opponents when we're looking at the quality of face. They're incredible, they're, yeah. they are. That's the point I was yeah. going to come back on to, is what we've got to accept is that these two teams, people are thinking that they will be potential finalists. Yeah. You know, and it's such high quality siege between the two. Sure, G2 have had a game plan. It hasn't worked out. That happens in a best of three. Like I said it earlier, normally in a best of three, you expect to win your map pick, lose your opponent's map pick and play the decider. Yeah. It's gone a little bit backwards in this best of three because the two teams are that good. But I think in the heart of hearts, most people would expect this this best of three to go to a decider. I'll, I'll even be so bold on to say that the winner of this game probably is a grand final team that we're going to see. So I'll be very bold clip on to say that already on phase two, day one. I... Because you want to clip that, because if he's right, he will bring that back up again, that's for probably sure. Probably will. Uh, map three is Nighthaven Labs. And one thing's for sure, this will, of course, come to a head here and now in this deciding map. Who are you leaning towards, Fresh? Oh, I'm biased. Let's be honest. We're all Europeans here. I'm leaning towards G2. The reason is, this is G2's number one map preference. It is also FaZe's number one map preference. Little bit of recency bias. FaZe only limped across the line against Team Bliss in this tournament on the map. G2 have been extraordinary every time they've played it. They've actually not lost it since it came out. Mm. So a little bit of recency bias for me says that G2, uh, I, sh I should quantify that, not lost it in tier one competition. They did lose it in a tier three competition to a team called G2. We won't comment any more on that. <laughs> you had to bring it up. I had to. What do you think, Fab? I have no biases whatsoever. I have no history with either of these organizations, or I don't care that they're European. So me, I have nothing. I think G2 will win it, just because I think the map just plays so well into them. Both of these, I mean, it doesn't matter who wins the game. It's an amazing game to watch. I want both teams to win. We nah, can't you have... can't sit on the fence. Get, you know, get a prediction. Okay, I want G2 to win because of, well, I'm a G2 fanboy, always have been, always will be in all my history. But the map plays so well into both of them because it's a new map, which means that all the quirks in defense haven't been figured out yet. So these attacking stuff that both of them are really, really good at, just playing any sort of gameplay they want, high speed, low speed, just 
one side, all spread out, all of that can be used on this map because the defenders don't actually understand it. I don't think 100% yet. All right, well, listen, if you love a prediction at home, you can get involved as well. There is a prediction set up on the Ubisoft website right now if you want to take part yourselves. But right now, it is time to finally settle the score. Which of our two juggernaut teams here are about to guarantee a spot at Grand Finals weekend? It's time to find out. Lynx, stuck. Let's do this. Let's do this indeed, Ian. I have to agree with Fabian. Not on the prediction. That's why with the G2, former G2 analyst, the former G2 coach might think. A little biased. A little biased, but in all seriousness, I do agree with Fabian on something. Whoever wins this series, I agree, will be in the grand finals. Mm -hmm. There are great teams on the other side of the bracket. VP. No. Wow. No. They Sh pulled that back quite no. a bit. No, 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 no. No way. Y'all. Okay, no, I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to do something, okay? Do it. I'm not saying FaZe need to win the social prediction, but you just watched FaZe 7-3 G2 on their own pick, and you're like, ah, 35%. It should be 50-50. Do you want to know why? Because these are two of the best teams at the whole tournament. Yes. One map separating one from a further run in the winner's bracket and one from a single life left at the six Invitational 2024. If that is not a dead heat, I don't know what is. Yes, indeed, my friend. It's been very, very close. But I will say this, there has been a few turncoats, for sure, because the percentage was much worse True. before. But now this is where the rubber hits the road, my friend. This is Night Haven Labs. It's had nine plays so far throughout this tournament. It is the least defender-sided map and it, it really comes down to what Fabian had to talk about, my friend. This map has not been in the pool for very long. People have an understanding of it, but it isn't a known quantity just yet. We're not going to categorize it as that. This is still on its teeter-totter, trying to figure out exactly its play style. Yes. So we'll see how FaZe and G2 can apply themselves to the map after this ban. FaZe, Doka, Monty, Fenrir, and Azami will be removed, but is it going to be FaZe? phasing the hell up on this map or is it going to be G2 basically pulling a Goku using the <laughs> G2 army creating a spirit bomb in the damn sky Carter and plumbing it onto phase in order to take this last map I have no idea that's why we cast the games <laughs> they're not played on paper that'd be a lot more boring yes let's jump into this thing let's see how these rounds tick doki already saying good luck have fun in the chat i love a good sport when i see it you can talk your shit all you want just make sure at the end of the day you're still a good sport now phase and g2 i am making a plea to you directly i am speaking to you right now you gave us an 8-7 Banger, map one of cafe. But as Fabian and Jack and Ian mentioned, a little bit of a snoozer map two. A little bit of a weaker showing from G2 than we saw on map one. And so I speak to you on behalf of me, Sam, and everybody else. If you gave us a banger in map one, you better somehow double your efforts in map three. Because border might be crazy, it might be chaotic, but if this is a map that both teams love and is still very much being invented in real time, this is where we might very well see some of the craziest stuff we've seen this tournament. Better get your goggles on for science, folks. Definitely gonna want some PPE yeah. here. You better be pausing that VOD to say, what did he just do? I'm not pausing nothing, I'll tell you that right now. No, oh, sir. We're flying through this. Twitch drone here for Virtue is, oh, is he gonna turn it around? I don't think that he is. Oh, well now though, after he gets whatever you was shooting that at, might have been a camera or something of the sort, but either way, they will be able to drone out that player on blue. Alamal more than aware that that player can try and persist. There's a mute jammer here too that Virtue will spot out. It's that drone in through. And do remember this is a basement offense. So as of right now, what FaZe are really just trying to do is trying to keep things a little widespread, stay in the face of G2, delay this time, especially around these stairwells where it's a little bit more applicable. You can be safe, you can play on the stairwell and then just rotate back down in good timing. There's one consistent thing that both of these teams oh. have done a great job at. I was going to say, doing damage to the Intel game, and no so way! Doing damage to G2 Spirits! Somehow a two-piece out of thin air puts Doki and Virtue on their back feet. 
And remember that lack of drones I mentioned? Well, Virtue and Doki have none in their pockets. Doki's got the Inox, but doesn't have a chance. A flawless round to end map two, and a flawless beginning for FaZe on the decider. Oh, Jitsu. Major opportunities there. I can most definitely tell you there's a highly finite amount of people that can pull off what Souls did just here. There is very, very small, maybe a handful around the world that can make that opportunity matter the most. And Souls just so happens to be one of them. G2, you're gonna have to do better than that. Oh, I didn't even realize Handy got a 3K. Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. And FaZe, this is the best they have looked this entire tournament. This is truly incredible. They are playing up to their caliber. I mean, I want to remind all of you folks, we talked, we touched on it a couple times inside a group stage here for FaZe. Before we came to this tournament, Carter, we all obviously did our own due diligence. We went out, talked to some people, saw how scrim reports are going, doing all these kind of things. Yeah, see right? what the streets were saying. Yeah, you got to see how the streets talk. And the streets were saying, yo, FaZe is kind of nasty. That's what they were saying. And I, I thought they were spitting. I really did. We all did. But then we got the group stage and things were a little lackluster. And listen, we don't, listen. Unpolished. We're two Americans, stuff. no disrespect, but they did lose 2-0 to SSG. You know? And, and we get to say that because, you know, we're yeah, American. We're North American. We love SSG, but it's also FaZe Clan. I mean, come on. Yeah. But now, look at what is happening right in front of our eyes. Faye is already around up on the defensive side here on Night Haven. And again, remember, only a 52% defensive win rate currently on this map. If FaZe can try and do G2 dirty from this end, this could be a very serious consideration going into their offensive side. We might not even need overtime. And that would mean oh. that FaZe from Cafe onward have been late. indomitable yeah, up against know. what seems to be what everybody yeah, thought was going to be the team to lift a hammer this year. Don't say we might not need overtime. I, I need overtime. I need it. I've got a fever and the only prescription is another overtime map, Sam. So don't tempt fate like that. Don't you do it. We'll see how it works out, though. We'll see if we end up getting there. Bees go in. And Vita King baiting the intel a little bit, baiting the information. He steps on in. Cyber instead moving into Garage. Doki lurking down below spots him, but neither party lands a single bit of damage on the other. So they'll retreat. They'll back up. Give each other some very, very well-earned respect. It's half the round now gone. Neither team has really poked the other any substantial degree. Well, Sam, I was about to say, maybe. Oh, a nice find here, a down and a confirm from Uno's Rotero drone. Vita King will try and at least support with the M590. See if the Jackal wants to try and step up. Doki is gonna try and search for this. He really, really wants it desperately. What if we have somebody over here to just support him on these blue stairs? Benja is at the bottom of them right now, but not looking to try and don the mantle just yet. Cyber's gonna go down, and so far, G2 keeping this little widespread with a bunch of different angles working on this top floor has worked swimmingly for them. Alamau will go down, but he'll be able to pick himself back up due to those new frost mats. The vultures are circling. They're able to find Alamau, but it's also doom spelled for FaZe. As they start to fight back, G2 still hold on to their lead. Oh, no. Souls, who's been so ridiculous, is given two 1v1s, oh, looks no. towards the second, but the flashbang lands, and so do the shots. Little worrying position there, I gotta say. Sam Souls staying alive for quite a long time. But G2 win there first, and we move on like nothing happened. Most definitely. We'll sweep that one under the rug for G2's sake. <laughs> Couple kills going awry there, and uh, I mean, hey, you gotta laugh so you don't cry sometimes, you know what I mean? Because FaZe are playing so dang well. G2 having to step up their caliber here too. I really like what they did with that strategy there, Carter. Keeping things wide across this top floor, keeping the info matrix going. No shot. Some really solid kills. And yeah, that's how we got him to readjust there. He goes down and then that Rotero drum blows up and picks him up right here. So it's very well done from G2 in the, the way that they wanted to try and handle this top floor. I love the word just sitting there on his phone. Caught playing Subway Surfers, man. <laughs> Happens to the best Happen of us. Happens to the best of us. I, I've been there. Of a bomb. I'm more of a temple run guy myself. Listen, listen, after the map Handy had, Handy's like, 
There was no action the first minute and a half. He's like, he's just sh he's just shaking. He's like, I need I need to do something. I need to do something. Ten seconds to go. So he pulls out the phone, gets caught. Unlucky. GG go next. We move on to round three. Back down to the first floor. Sorry, not back down to the first floor. Remember, because like it was a basement defense, but like all the action happened on the second floor. Yep. It was a bit of a bit of a mixing of two events. But now we have that first floor where the second floor is going to play, I imagine, quite a substantial role. Yeah, and this is storage control room. This is a pretty interesting side as well, Carter. We've seen it 18 times, but it only has a 22% defensive win rate. Oh, and there's a really good. good reason. It's because of all of that verticality that you see upstairs. If G2 are able to capture that, just imagine what Benja can do with that flooring. And also, there's no Ying on the board, but what common execute we see is just flying into the cargo window, somebody holding this breach from up above, and then just going in for a quick plant off of relatively a small amount of angles being held. Absolutely. And it, well, look at this. What Uno know? just vaulted on into that window. No Ying on the board. And down oh, goes right. the diffuser. 5v3 now established for G2. handy has got a vault down below and try to take some fights outside of the breach. Two different players, one spotted, but no headshot for the Alibi's efforts. It's the second. Make that the second kill for Handy. Three attempts. Two out of three ain't bad. But it's all FaZe have to fight against G2 at the moment in the post plan. EE1D goes out the final one for Doki. Freezes them only for a second. There is a little bit of intel going Souls' way, but G2 are playing this so passively. They even got the intel for the close swing. Just a clinical post plan at the moment for G2. And a crossfire to end it. For the first time since Border oh so long ago in the early game, G2 are back in the lead. Good little conversation happening there from G2. Just give him the space there, seeing what was happening on the bench. Breaking things down, and yeah, Alamount getting a little cooked there on the timing, but it just so happens to, uh, I mean, happen every once in a while. That's Siege for you. But I will say this, G2, pulling the wool over FaZe's eyes here. And as you said, we have seen this time and time again when it comes to this bomb site. If you're able to work your way into barrels whilst also maintaining control of security upstairs where nobody can rotate in to stop you, uh, you have a huge problem on yes. your hands. Uh, and not only that, but also if y'all are smart Siege viewers, you know, obviously some of you are new, you probably didn't notice this, but Benja, he was downstairs. He actually rotated up from that stairwell to get that pick on the cross. But the whole reason he was down there in the first place is to make sure there's no Solus, there's no Pulse, there's nobody that's going to try and thwart their game plan through the soft flooring downstairs in what I believe is tank, but I don't know my verticality that well on this map yet, so maybe I'm a little off base. <laughs> but either way, in the basement playing that pivotal role, it's important nonetheless no matter what room he was in. Benja will unfortunately suffer for that good deed in last round. 50 HP right at the start. His basement defense just like we had back in the first round. FaZe will attempt it. Now the only defense they've won on this half so far. A lot of success in that roam, especially from Handy, who got himself a nice 3K in that round. And G2, who were trying to flood up the Aqua Stairs for so long, never were really able to march their way up until Doki was in a 2v5. 45 seconds in, and well, Doki's marched his way into the top floor and tried to take down Cyber very quickly, but Cyber oh. finds one and is almost Able to escape, but Alamo with the buzzer beater catches him on the rotation and somehow gets the trade for G2, even though it seemed like highway robbery was about to occur on the second floor. Benja, 4-2-0, the best start that he's had so far in these maps, in this series. On the Jackal now and making good work of it as well as he's already made a couple of discoveries around the map, forcing these phase members back. And they'll still have another Inox scanner to utilize later on down the line. Could really assist them with the execution, but instead he's going to use it right now to see where these players are, and that'll force Handy back downstairs over on the exosuit side. Like these little pocket jammers right there, just to, on the avenue back, maybe G2 drone it, they don't see anybody. Now they need to drone it again. Have to double check, spend more time droning out that position. And because this bomb site in some ways functions like Oregon Basement, of course, it's a little different. You have those exterior walls, which Basement very much does not have. A little bit more verticality, too. A yeah, little bit more verticality, too. But it's, there's only two stairwells that you can actually push down. And if you don't have control of those, your best hope is the exterior wall. Now, Virtue's dead. 
The ace charges are not going to be a factor for this bottom four clear, so Doki will march his way down. There is a Z-ping on one player. We know that the castle's looking at the ceiling right now. Does Doki give away his position? Uno gets the first. Souls quickly falls, but Handy's waiting. Sitting in the corner, Doki doesn't check it. Down goes the IQ, FaZe traded back, another very improbable trade, but this time results in FaZe stopping G2 from gaining any more ground. Another flashbang goes out. Alamo has these vertical angles, but we are running out of time to convert this minimal advantage, maybe in terms of utility onto the bottom floor. But with those smokes almost taken out of play, maybe G2 have a chance. Oh. Finnick King uses it. Now, down goes Handy. 3v2, got to march through the smoke. This is still winnable for FaZe if they can get the right positioning. Vita King with one. Duno sees him, doesn't cut him down. What? Vita King! Uno saw him! Bleak and you'll miss it! Vita King with the clutch of the series! I've said it before, Carter, and I'll say it again. The M590 runs on hopes and dreams, but that round right there was what ran on hopes and dreams. Unbelievable. Insane stuff from Vita King here. Look. Lops that man's head off, kills the follow-up, and not even capable of swinging back through a triple kill for Vita King and a moment's notice. That's four kills practically in three seconds, or rather three kills in practically four seconds. Truly disgusting stuff. Now FaZe tie things up once again. I mean, when these two are close, it is neck and neck, man. Literally came down. We see, we have the advantage of not actually being Uno because we get to see Vita King on our screen as he's taking down Uno's coverage, but Uno doesn't. He's focused, he's looking forward doesn't spot the smoke in that little split second that Attackers he appeared. And that ends up costing them. It's not Uno's fault. That happens sometimes. You know, nobody's going to flame him for missing a moment like that when it's so tense, when everything is on the line. It happens sometimes. But it is still moments like that that decided map one, that decided map two in some ways, even with the more dominant scoreline. And round four certainly decided it. And that Vita King 1v3. Second floor defense now. We always have this focus on the second floor, this IT breach. Opening up with the hard breach charges. They did it when they attacked Cargo. We'll do it when they attack second floor now. It's very quick to do, little cost to the attack. And now they focus on the also important Terrace breach. At least, they likely will. More than likely. Definitely agree with you on that one. But the hard breach charges for it. We'll have to see. What does Doki exactly want to accomplish here? We're just going to hop back down, more than likely reassessing, just going to try and reinsert somewhere else, probably get a drone active across the map. Uno's got things held down at the top of blue just for rotation, trying to help Benji dictate what his next play is going to be. And that blue stairwell is of the utmost importance when it comes to this bomb site. You, you can sneak your way up that thing in proper timing. There's definitely some big moments to be had. Well, Loki, Candela's close, and he's gonna swing into Handy. Finds one, finds two with the LMG. And now they have full blue stairs control. Handy and Souls both go down, and G2 looking to claim the lead again. Looking to claim the lead further. Benjamaster almost spins on KDS, but the retreat works, and Alamau going hunting, looking to recover, but not press the advantage. He can hold the angle, put down a drone. They've got the intel on him as well. This isn't strictly necessary. We know it's only a Wamai, but as he walks wow. into Alamau's sights, who's he to look a gift horse in the mouth? Vita King 2 drops down. Alamo's like, you want to come at me? You want to give me another? You want to feed the beast? Well, maybe I'll bite. And indeed he will. 2K for Alamau, 3K for Doki. G2 reclaim their lead after dropping the basement bomb site. And is this the energy? Is this the moment that G2 needed? Put a little extra fuel in this car. They'll take the lead again here at three to two. It's the last defensive round now for FaZe as they could not get a damper put on G2. Nothing to try and attempt, especially after Doki with such a solid exchange of angles. And also that info game working wonders for G2. As you can see, Benja constantly yellow pinging that man as he crosses through that mid rotation. 
Now G2 with a chance to have a 4-2 half here on the offense. And another great example of the ability for both these teams, in this case G2, to dial back the pace, to take a second, take the foot off the gas, and progress forward. Because we see Doki get those two kills, and you immediately thinking, okay, maybe it's a rush. Maybe they're just sending it on in, but they stop. That's why we love both of these teams. It's not that they just go for those crazy rounds. It's that they know when to stop. They know when to hit the pause button to reset. Because they have a 5v3. Most teams, I imagine that situation, and most players would feel a strong urge. Fight, push forward, finish the round. You have the lead, you have the advantage, go forward. But G2 pause. They know they have the, they have the 5v3 and they see the Wamai down below. They get the Z ping, as you talked about in your recap. And that's why this game has been so good. That's why we love this. This is a meta of very much imperfect play. And I don't mean the, de the defender side of meta people talking about. I mean the past year of Siege. Mm -hmm. It's been one of imperfections, oftentimes of gambles, yes. of saying, oh, I've got a 60-40, I'll take it. It's I've got all an 80 risk assessment. Take it. Exactly. Yeah. It's risk assessment. But sometimes people get lost in the numbers and lost in their world of probabilities and push things too far, take risks they don't need to, lose on gambles they never should have made. But when you see a team who can take a risk, who can make a play, but then have the confidence and the patience to stop and not to push it, that is what truly separates a great team from one of the best in the world in this meta. And the fact that we can not only point to that round, but multiple from both teams of that defining factor speaks volumes for what these teams are capable of, whomever moves forward and whomever moves to the lower bracket. I mean, it's just so hotly contested in between these two right now. FaZe Clan with a lot of solid consideration on this defense. Some pretty stellar moments, I would say. But also G2, the same breadth, able to create a lot of opportunity, especially with things like, you know, cargo and barrels. We're able to get that plant down in pretty convincing fashion to think about what phase can try and replicate on this last rotation this last site as they try and see what they can potentially do you have to consider everything that g2 has done on this offensive side they've been very creative and it's sometimes only needing very minimal access to the map in general to be able to get these things to go off now phase have everything to consider Every single one of these players individually thinking through things on this tech pause as they'll be left to their own devices. And as you can see, the fist bumps going around. It's a telltale sign is what's to come. So we jump back into Nighthaven Labs. Jump back into round six. Oh. I believe we'll have another rehost as well. A little bit of an issue with the side selection. Still a 3-2 lead, of course, and I was going to say, oh. round six. The FaZe trying to fight back, get the 3-3 half, but G2, just as we saw on border with FaZe able to get that lead, that's what G2 are fighting for. Because on Cafe, we were treated to an even contest. 3-3, ending up being another 3-3 half, ending up being another 1-1 split, and then one more round, round 15, to decide that, that battle between G2 and FaZe. Then on border, we had a 4-2. Faze able to get the lead, and they never left it behind. G2 looking to get the same thing on Nighthaven. I don't know what's in the future. I don't know if Faze will fight back or if maybe collapse, similar to how G2 did in the latter half of that game. But if G2 are able to get the lead at the half for the first time so far this series, considering how rejuvenated they seem, especially with Benja really fighting back, mm -hmm. I just have to hope. I just have to hope Faze fight back, of course, for that G2 really give us a good game with them in the driver's seat instead of FaZe. Yeah, you know that there is a lot of Samurai fans around the world right now hoping, Carter, praying that they can get through this series. Because, I mean, you know how much this matters to stay in the top side of the bracket at an event like this. It means the utmost. It's like having an extra life in Mario. Yep. There's things that you really want in life, and sometimes it's a one-up, isn't it? And both of these teams, that's why they're fighting so unbelievably hard to try and maintain that advantage over the other teams at this tournament. Nobody wants to go down into that lower bracket and potentially have an off series and go home so early on when you could maintain that extra life and carry that on through this event through to main stage 
be seated in front of a beautiful Brazilian audience. And you know another reason why you don't want to go to that lower bracket? There's W7M are down there. It's true. Could you imagine if G2 and W7M were down there? I'd be like, ah, it's raps. Yeah, like, like, oh, <laughs> sick, cool, great. <laughs> awesome, so dope. Well, speaking of things that are dope, let's get back into this game here. Fingers crossed, and to uh, relaunch our server again here, folks. So hopefully, things will be okay. And I think we are. Phase as of right now, are gonna go to Command Center in servers. That is gonna be the top floor bomb site. This is a site that we saw some magic happen for both teams, respectively. The last oh, yeah. time that we saw it was when Doki had that mad lad play with the T5 on the top floor as he put them both down with the LMG. So very well done. It's actually gonna be Doki once again here on the game. Let's hope he sticks it just to try and reclaim some of that magic from that previous attack. Ridiculous. Of course he switches off it. Shout out. Thanks, Doki. <laughs> Appreciate it. Big fan. Super cool. But we saw some good stuff on the Jackal as well, so I'm not going to complain, especially when you have two Titans facing in the server. Cyber also on the Solus. I'm eager to see what work he can do there. Mentioned it before, the drones for G2 at times. If I just look up at the top left or the top right, depending on who's attacking, I feel a little bit more consistent consistently when I look at that G2 drone count sometimes. Again, down to three and two with a lot of time remaining, and thankfully, given the fact that Doki has, you know, a 21 kill game in him, or Uno, on the Ying has a lot of gadgets. They can still make it work. They can still make a lot of big plays. The Intel game has been a bit of a problem for G2 so far. Sometimes not getting enough value out of the drones they've lost. So we'll see what Cyber can do. And well, just run out on Benja, sitting outside on camps. I mean, Benja cannot buy luck in this game, can he? I feel so bad. It's, it's a constant just wave of pressure being pushed against him. Cyber will be able to uh, at least try and take a fight against Doki, but Doki's so quick to the trigger, he'll take him down almost immediately. Nice find there and a nice trade, but although you did get rid of the Solus, already four drones gone, and he killed Lion. That was the big thing there. They brought a lot of info because they really like risking these drones. So they bring the Lion, they bring the Bees, as well as Jackal on top of that. But now, lacking those EE1Ds, which obviously makes it to where FaZe can't move around the way that they want to. So this opens up a lot of options to the defense. Still able to get that Solus if G2 want to go for a plant later in the round, not having to worry about it being below. That's nice. Oh. Look at this. Handy creeping forward. The Z-Ping is giving intel about Doki's position. Look at that recoil control on the SMG-12. Doki now falls. Alamo watches it happen in front of him. Nothing he can do but stare in horror as G2 go down in the man count. And Handy rotates back to the bomb site. Okay, G2. We're bleeding. How do we hem this? Oh. Is it on virtue? Vita. Living La Vida Loca with that swing. That was insane. That was about virtue now, too. I cannot believe that he actually survived that. And honestly, both parties respectively. And Zvita King, it's a little bit of damage. He's going to double smoke things here inside of security. Virtue and the rest of the gang just stepping on goo mine after goo mine that have been breadcrumbed across this top level. Ben King's got the play. The shotgun right here. Will Virtue get in in time? Oh. He's blinded by the Candela. Precious seconds cost. An opening maybe, but now phase are ready. The King can start holding this angle. The other four guns trained on G2's positions. KDS takes down Uno. G2 starting to make a comeback, but something else has got to give. They can't just go into this to the 2v3. Vita King's not biting. He knows the shotgun is favoring him. Quick peeks just for the ego, but Virtue going for the backstab. Sees the goo mine. The fuse are not in G2's control at the moment, so Virtue needs to win on this backstab. What a kill from Alamau! Vita King holding that close door. I don't know how he got away with that, but the shotgun is better. And he still holds strong. And I think Alamau has made enough magic happen. No, he is not winning that one. 3-3 half for FaZe. A 2v1 to close out and a disciplined finisher to even the half. Yeah, everything about that, speaking to the level of play that FaZe is able to produce, get those big kills, 
every single step of their utility getting in the way of G2. And I mean literally every step as those goo mines constantly poking like and prodding these within players. within the span of five seconds, and, and, like. And that's the thing about Legion. You know, you bring them, you're like, oh, well, it's not going to matter that much, is it? Oh, yes, it absolutely will. Sometimes it can completely stunt an offense in good timing, go. just like we saw. G2 did not have the opportunity to try and deal with this scenario in the way that they wanted to. Not completely based off of just those goo mines, but because of the way that FaZe was pressuring things around this map. And uh, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that's probably not Doki getting excited that round. So. That, that actually threw me for such a loop. I was like, did I mess up? <laughs> we lost the round. Woo! I was literally like, did I mess up? Ooh, that's a, that scared me. I was like, located by attackers. It's one of those fears as a caster. Ten seconds to insertion. Anyway. But seriously, that utility play from FaZe, the smokes from Vita King, and then also Five those goo mines. The smokes are always kind of that bigger piece of utility you think of wasting time, but that goo mine Attackers placement, are moving to the bomb. excellent. We've seen a lot of actually very impactful goo so far. Two on Cafe, three right there on Night Haven. Dude, and the coolest part about him is you can literally slap him in any lineup. Yep. He's so applicable. Such a solid operator. Such a solid op for Doki, too. Mm -hmm. Now that he's uh, moved on to the defensive side, see him pick up the T5. See Benja bring the IQ, or not the IQ, excuse me, the Valkyrie, and of course, I'd be remiss if I mentioned Come Uno on. on the tuber. There it is. We haven't even got to see him inside of this game just yet, but we'll see if anybody will be put on ice. Alamo! Oh, guys, I'm still sweating. Uno's, uh, had yeah, yeah, yeah. Uno's actually Ooh. had enough. Ooh. <laughs> Face being on defense and doing all the things they did, it just made me worry when I saw that Nitro still go under his feet. Well, I was just a little scared, that's all. But obviously, that's... Uno throws the C4 like, I'm sorry, little one. <laughs> I, I really am. He just blows up Alamo. He's like, we actually have to sacrifice you to win this game. So this is part of the contract, part of the deal. Well, last charge goes out, breaks the barbed wire in front of Handy. Doki might be feeling a lot of pressure momentarily, but Virtue can help bring him back to the site. Indeed he will. Both retreating down the Exo stairs as FaZe moves to fill that space. I think one pleasant aspect of this whole game has been how consistently right as the defense starts giving up that ground as they should, the attack immediately takes it in turn as they should. It's like both teams somehow, everyone in the lobby moving in sync at times on this clear, giving up space, then filling it. But Alamau only fills the rafters with ledge. Tags Handy's heel by just a little bit, then moves back into the site. But that's clear for FaZe, done and dusted. Let it breathe for a second. See what the next steps here are for both squads. G2 do not want to give up any of these bodies. Alamal's already taken a little bit of damage, but they can allow this timer to be used by FaZe. So begin ripping up the floorboards here with the boogie drones. You have Cyber as well, so that skeleton key can't assist. There's still a lot of utility implemented here by G2, although, again, Alamau keeps getting tagged up. A smoke out already, so might have caught a stray as he swung off an angle to get that out. Don't exactly know how that ended up breaking down. With 30 seconds remaining, FaZe have got to find this accelerator. Beta King sprints in. Oh, but he's cut down by Benja. I remember seeing that plant spot when FaZe played this map against DZ all the way three months ago, and I think Benji might have as well. A quick pre-fire as he sprints out the door. KDS gets the trade, though, so 4v4, but Cyber in a similar position to Vidiking, especially with the Gumon giving away his position. Handy might get the kill, but Cyber's got to get this bomb down with G2 players covering. Virtue able to find another, but the coverage from FaZe is good enough. G2 on the retake, not working out so far. Benji down to Alamo, one bullet remaining, two finished off very quickly. And so we leave it to Virtue whose feet are very likely exposed. If KDS wants to take this fight, he does. Virtue might find him, but Cyber's willing to pay the price of KDS to win the first round on attack. Where are we going? Uh, go top left. Loving this mentality out of G2. Just lost the rounds. Quick breakdown, immediately roll things over into round eight. Things happen. That's Rainbow Six. It is what it is. You can't change the past, can you? Unfortunately enough, folks, nobody's figured out time travel, or at least from what I know. So, don't have access to that. FaZe with a gorgeous round right there.
I especially loved how they were able to use the full breadth of map control there, all that verticality working its way in, Cyber being able to find a big gap there inside of Tank as he worked his way in through the little Animus room. This is very well done across the board. And now FaZe with a lead once again here, but from the offensive side of the court. That's how it started on Cafe. FaZe are able to get a 3-3 half, win the first round, and then G2 were constantly fighting from behind. Getting around, FaZe take the lead again. Get around, FaZe take the lead. Get around overtime, and that's where you have to finish. G2 are hoping they don't have to do that again. Because I have to imagine uh, when you're in a long best of three and the first map goes 8-7 like that, it gets a little tiring if you have to then do it a second time after already losing a map in between those two things. And just to remind you, this is FaZe's second best of three today. True. And the other one went all the way to three maps as well. Sam, it's honestly, this series has been going on so long, I, d I forgot we even casted another game today. Yeah. That's how much I've been enveloped in this. Yeah. Phase, they will have been playing as long as you and I have been casting. So let me do the math real quick. They've been playing for a little over six hours, folks, at a high enough quality level to be beating G2 right now. So I'll let that speak for itself. 2-1 win over the world champions after beating Los, the team that knocked them out of the Atlanta semifinals. That would be a hell of a good day for any team. A hell of a good couple teams to knock out. The personal beef at the beginning, the undeniable achievement at the end. Most definitely. The international beef, you could say. Oh, yes. Handy. Good with that torch. That's a top wall. To try and create a soft panel here on the right-hand side. Big thing is, folks, when you do this, you want to make sure you get that right little streak of the wall. And then that center piece, you want to make sure you torch that appropriately. Otherwise, it'll more than likely hold it up. Past that, it's really just those little pixels that you're trying to make sure to break apart. Those can be a nuisance every once in a while. And if you don't do it cleanly, Carter, you have to go back and fix things up. Sometimes you've already screwed it up so much. There's so many angles to worry about, just like for KDS here. And, uh, you really can't even try and reassess it. The wall will just lock itself up, but obviously that won't befall phase here. Uno really, really wanting to work his way inside of Electrical. Handy's in here as well. There's one close. The Nitro still out. It's not going to do too much for him. There's a Legion locked to the side, and what a shot from Uno. The mechanics, but Vita King, he's worked his way in from Connector. They've used the Selma charge, and now they've equalized the man count. What a maniac. He vaults into literally four people on the site, vaults back out, Benja downs one, but again, Vita King in the clutch is able to revive KDS, Souls with a third. Doki rotates down below though. That leaves Alamo all alone until Doki gets into position for the C4. A lot of low HP phase oh. players, C4 goes out and it only does the smallest inconsequential no. amount of damage to Cyber. Souls shuts down Alamo and Doki, a defeated man on the vertical, must do his best on the same floor as his opponents. Look at how low HP phase are though. He's got one, the MPX might not do a lot of damage, but if he spots these players, if he can just land a few shots, an inconsequential amount in the grand scheme of things, he'd make it a 4v4. He's moving towards the Diffuser, he knows the IQ's behind this pillar, he needs to get this kill to react in time. Slowly falling back, KDS now down, but look at how patient FaZe are playing. They know it's Doki, he needs to make the move. Doki who needs to push forward. Doki who falls to Cyber. Phase up 5-3, their lead is widened. It is not gonna be a back and forth game like Cafe. Not able to get too much out of the G2 bench that time around. Timeout called from them. A lot to consider here as these defenses have not been easy. A 3-3 split in between these two teams, Carter. G2 in these last two rounds not really able to slow down FaZe in any sense of the term. It has been FaZe constantly battering G2 over and over again, and these bruises are persisting, especially in that last round as they practically cleave <laughs> everybody on the site. Sam, you wanna know something funny? What's up, brother? In the time between now and when this series started, yeah. we had the final map of NIP Fury, yeah. and we've had the entirety of Sonic's Wolves. <laughs> Wait, wait, and wait, we are now wait. on the final series of the Beast. Uh, uh, man, I love my job. <laughs> Can you imagine? Like, 
can you imagine if we're playing after this? Like, Jesus, man, can you just finish? Yeah, like, can you guys? <laughs> BP and NIP are just like, come on, man. <laughs> Oh, I imagine dude. they're probably watching it right now. Oh, no, they is, probably this, are. This is one of those games where, like, you just gotta stop what you do and enjoy it. Yeah, no, most definitely. This is this is gonna be one for the history books. I can feel it. And on a day where we already had a like a history-making level game in Wolves W7M, the fact that we get two. Oh my God. Two games, honestly, it's a it's an absolute crime. These aren't happening on main stage in front of a crowd, but. Yep. We still have the privilege of watching them, still have the privilege remaining. of experiencing the level of siege they can bring, the level of play they can muster. Five seconds remaining. But it's phase again with the lead on map three, just like they had on border, able to move very Attack quickly. Objective. Then it was 5-2, now it's 5-3, and with G2's timeout, if they want any hopes of regulation, four rounds in a row. And you know they don't want another 8-7 OT to win this series. G2, that was a perfectly called timeout right there, Carter. They do not want to allow FaZe to get onto match point. Let, don't let that timeout burn inside of your pocket either. Activate. Utilizing that to hopefully its fullest advantage. Discussing things for this basement bomb site. Doki's going to be on a roam all the way upstairs. And obviously FaZe won't be aware of this unless they go for a clear. You have a few things built up. So FaZe on second consideration, more than likely knowing that there could be some bodies on this top floor. They're going to do exactly that. And drone this out. Twitch drone out. Not able to do too, too much. But it'll be EMPs down and the spell was through. Uno, he'll get one. Can he get the second? Don't believe he will. Wow. Oh, it was so very close. And that's on those new Selma timings. Do remember, used to be 3.2 seconds, I want to say. Now they're a flat four. So just that little bit of difference that the Doves made. Make a huge moment change here for the Bandit. Inoperable. Almost that clutch timing right there. Doesn't work out. See how FaZe move off of that though as they're able to find the angle on that top floor. Nice little drone engagement right there. Got the Twitch and the Brava in action. I think we mentioned, I believe might have mentioned with you, might have been Emmy the other day. I can't exactly remember. But either way, both these operators really increasing in pick rate as you need to deal sometimes with those F-knots. Obviously those are banned, but a lot of the electronics that the defense has to deal with. But, well, this is a bit of a different story entirely. Yeah, and you always go for the straightforward angle too and just be like, they get more drones, straight up. Like, being able to shock things away or steal them, that's amazing, but straight up more drones, more things to try and fodder in and find out what's going on. Oh my, no way. speaking of fodder, could have been cannon fodder right there from the nitro cell, but it's not gonna happen. Handy, so much damage dealt to him. A strong breeze will knock him over. Virtue can't find him. The plan is starting. Somebody's got to get on this cross. That'll force Handy off the case. And G2, have they done it? Benja, a lot of damage to him. You could say the same to Vita King. Attack KDS will find one. Handy goes down, and that's going to be the case. The case indeed, but Vita King on so low HP is easy pickings for Benja Master on the top floor. We had a stalemate for so long inside of Cargo, and it's G2 after breaking it to come away the victors at least right now. They put KDS in a very difficult position. He pre-fires one. Sure, all right, that's fair enough. But there's a direct angle on the barricade he's walking through. He's dead to right. This is a dead man walking, ladies and gentlemen. And it's one pump from Alamau to bring G2 back into it. Nice little shout there from Doki as well. If I heard it correctly, I might not have, but... They're literally making adaptations three rounds before they can play the boss. Yes, they are. They, mo <laughs> they most definitely are. Uh, and I mean, something to consider, and he's completely right. If we play that again, you really want to bring the Solus. Why? Because you can prevent that plant from underneath. Incredibly intelligent call there from him. Uh, but a great swing from Virtue. Virtue, not that one, but the previous one, that was a round-defining moment on that swing towards Souls. If Souls kills Virtue there, that's more than likely phase on map and match point. So very close are these margins, folks, and that's what we try to, to explain to you guys, is just how unbelievably close these rounds can get. And sometimes it's moments that you wouldn't even consider. You're like, oh, it's just one gunfight. But that gunfight is what tells the tale of the tape. It could be the thing to propel you to an ever better future. Things ripple out as we talked about matches in a tournament. Just like that, plays in a round do not exist in a vacuum. 
Sometimes it might not matter. Sometimes it causes an unintentional chain of events, or in this case, for Virtue, a, a very intentional chain of events, uh, winning the round and not and stopping the plant. But nonetheless, they have a lot of impact, and going one way could very well make the difference. Exterior walls opened up immediately from phase down below. First exothermic on the Animus wall. Now the likely try would like to go for the second down below, but you can see that little bit from G2. Got the soft panel open on the opposite side, so not fully reinforced. It's still contest somebody playing outside that wall, so Vita King instead will use it upstairs. Yeah, really like that. Have you also noticed the Virtue actually has the impacts, and they've got a little hole open yep. on that wall down there, so you can just toss it through for the single panel they had reinforced on the right-hand side of that two set. So, just smart adaptations from G2. Yep. There it is right there. You guys just saw Benjamin Master is going to be up inside a barrel as well. So we'll see how FaZe want to try and deal with this. They've already sprung things open for the Animus side. So can try and go for that plant they went for last time inside of Tank if it ends up being their path forward. It was a clean round from FaZe there. Even though they lost Vita King in the initial push, they were able to recover the diffuser, push on in, get the crossfires they needed. Just a great recovery from FaZe to win that round in the first place. But still one that G2 had a lot of successful moments able to deny the plant on the initial run. It was not a completely linear push. They had some players in the second floor, but there was a very definite position FaZe are pushing from, and G2 almost had the angles to completely shut it down. It seems they're moving to a similar position right now, Sam. We see a lot of movement around that garage hatch where they dropped before to move into tank. As you mentioned, with the boogie drones now opening up the vertical play, they don't, they're not committing themselves to it, but I have to think they're really telegraphing to us at least what's going on here. It's definitely. I like how G2 have kept things active on this mid floor as well. Allowing FaZe to set up a bit, but at some moment here, things are going to explode across this mid floor as they'll try and get some kills more than likely on the retake. Vita King's already worked his way down inside of Animus. Seen him there and before. I think, and I think we've gotten this right on this one, Carter. More than likely going to be a plant trying to go down inside of Tank. Everybody alive with sub 50 seconds remaining. This is about to be insane. Yeah, Benja Doki waiting so patiently, but all the kills oh are going phases way. KDS with a double to secure their lead. The flank completely shut oh. down. The anchors completely demolished. Uno put to one HP on death's door. Phase going in for the coup de gras. But a flashbang in hand gives Cyber away. But the round is still only phases to win. Match, map, and honestly, banger point for FaZe. Just one round away from sending the world champions to our lower bracket, two six invitationals in a row. You know, after map two, I still think a handful of people probably thought, oh, it's just a meme. There's no way. I mean, it's G2, man. It's They're gonna make anything this run. can happen. And, you know, anything can happen. Copium, copium, copium. Gaslight yourself into thinking whatever you want, but the reality of the situation is this. FaZe have two rounds to slam the door shut on G2 here on Night Haven Labs, and they're looking damn good, Carter. That round especially, G2, they kept two active players upstairs on that mid floor. It did absolutely nothing for them. They accomplished not a whole heck of a lot. A little bit of play to delay phase, but honestly, at the end of the day, didn't even do that much. They get Animus open, they get the Boogie Drones in over for the security office. It looked so darn good. And a successful round because of it from FaZe, especially after that whole plethora of kills poured in. I mean, what timing on that call as well. I was like, oh, things are gonna get crazy. Five kills pour into the kill feed on a moment's notice. I mean, my God, man, these two teams, they are swinging for the fences. FaZe is looking for that final, not even home run, just a single, just one more to get this over the line to finish both of these past two maps in regulation. We talked about how on border it needed to be perfect from G2. In a similar position now, down two rounds. Need to win these defenses, need to hold phase at the gate, stop them from pushing forward. Vita King already opening up the Terrace Breach. Very good time for FaZe so far. Not sure about the status of the IT wall, but still, one of the exterior walls opened up very quickly. And look, Handy immediately getting to work on the second. FaZe are not wasting a single second in executing their plan. 
going through the motions and accomplishing them well. As for G2, though, still some solid considerations here as they will be sitting on command center and servers. 33 plays so far this tournament before this map started has a 57% oh, no. defensive overall win rate and a ill-advised impact. He didn't get it over the top of the wall. Doesn't stop the cell, but there's a huge gap now in the side of this site. That's the kind of mistake that can genuinely cost you the game. It destroys the Mute Jammer, gives open the hole. Ben just got to win that fight, and he's shut down. But what a nice trade from Virtue. On the long angle, Sam, he makes it a 4v4. Doki. I mean, his damnedest from the site position here, Carter. You could cut the air with a knife right now between these two teams. G2 waiting in anticipation, waiting to see what FaZe will do. Vita King steps up, one right around the wall. We have one over an electric as well. Uno's gonna be holding this down with the M590. Frag grenade out will force him back. So he has to give the respect over to FaZe and what they're going to look to accomplish. This shotgun could mean the, the moment. It's gonna be Virtue first though. Uno, what do you have for us? Needs to be a shot, needs to be a kill, and indeed it is. Able to put FaZe in the difficult position. Vita King resigning himself to just pushing forward. How much can Souls accomplished? Uno watching the IT breach at the moment, but pulls the shotgun back out. This has to be Vidiking dead to rights. Has to be him falling as Souls keeps pressuring the backside. There's the shotgun. There's the comeback. 6-5, round 12. One team wins and we leave with a victor. One team wins and this game goes on a little bit longer. You can almost feel it. Overtime right on the horizon. FaZe will do everything to eclipse that moment. It will pull out every single stop. Every strategy will be utilized in this next round that they can bear. In G2, you better count your lucky stars. As there was a huge hole in the side of this ship. Holy shit. Insane moment there for G2 as they were able to make a picturesque moment up here out of thin air practically right there. Properly playing things in around that server after that Selma charge is able to create that breach. And now we sit here, Carter. Six, five with FaZe in the lead. FaZe resting back on earlier strategies, going back to what worked for them before. We'll have the Twitch, we'll have the Brava, Thatcher and Five Ace to assist to with breaking up some of these panels. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it will be a storage control room defense. And did it happen? There he is, ladies and gentlemen. You heard him say it. Let's play the Solus the next time we take this site. And there he is, Doki on the Solus. He will more than likely be all the way downstairs to try and assist Virtue later on in the round. As of right now, resting on site to make sure FaZe don't have the proper information as to what his strategy is. <gasps> Handy. There's no way. Just slips away. Thank oh, God. Virtue went for it. Thank God Doki switched to the Solus because the player who saved this defense for G2 previously. Look at this. What a risk, Virtue. That is an insane risk to take at this moment in the round. And yeah, it can be a game changer, but the shoes on the other foot, you just gave over a huge moment to phase. And as we've known, they take these and they run with them, Carter. They're gonna go back to the drones. They're gonna go back to every bit utility and info game that they have to try and assist them with this round. Just try to fall back on something. The IT breach now opened up. Doki has to do so much work with that player inside of Cargo, now taken care of. He's got to hold below. Uno also on the top floor. I believe we actually have Doki on the second floor as well, so not in a position to directly deny that right now. It's all four players on the top floor, Sam. Every single G2 defender sitting in this position. Are FaZe going to deal with it? They have no. to worry about these vertical angles. I don't think they are. We've talked about a lot of risk assessment, my friend. And let me tell you, as somebody that's played this game for a very long time, some of these moments are really hard to read, but this one's as clear as day for FaZe. They know what they must do. The case is gonna be in the hands of Handy. 
rotating all the way over towards the window. A drone in to check things out. Cyber trying to build up some new angles, trying to make sure there's nobody downstairs to try and prevent this plant. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Doki, he's going to try and run up over top, but he Jack can't do it. Phase nope. into the post plant. Nitro sells out. It deals serious damage to Doki. It's a four versus four, but G2, you only have 35 seconds. So little time left to try and figure this out. FaZe might have the angles. They've got the advantage too. Doki on one HP goes for the run out. In the grand final of day six, FaZe do the unthinkable. They send G2, the reigning champions, to the lower bracket where W7M, the heirs apparent, await them. And only one can come out alive. The beasts from Brazil, FaZe Clan, take it in max regulation here on Night Haven Labs. And not only that, but the absolute massacre on border will go down in history here in Rainbow Six Siege. GG's to both respective squads, but G2 have a lot of things to consider after this series. Their extra life has been spent, Carter. The next time this potentially happens, it's a plane flight home. And the craziest part is, at the beginning of the day, when Wolves upset W7M, the narrative we were talking about in the green room, well, guess who else got sent down to the lower bracket the first day? Guess who else made a run all the way through? G2, now W7M are in the same position. Well, G2 now find themselves there, and only one could potentially see us in the grand final. We have the desk to break down all the implications, as well as FaZe's incredible victory. G2 lose a best of three. FaZe fans here in Brazil rejoice. This one is over, and the world champions drop to dangerous territory. You can hear how loud it is, is here behind the scenes. That is a, a huge victory for FaZe Clan. And we're joined by KDS. Welcome to the show. Thank you, hello. Just to start with, the first Brazilian team to secure your place in front of the live crowd, your home fans, yeah. what does that mean to you? Amazing, because we. this is the first step for us, uh, is play against our, uh, we in our crowd in Brazil. This is amazing. And it will be the first time I play in the station with the crown. So it's amazing. Must be a dream come true. Yeah, yeah. First of all, big congratulations. Thank you guys played an incredible series. You've played such a long day, so I'm going to keep it short. Ramalho is your previous coach. He had you guys before. When you come up against someone that's been and know all of your internals, how do you prepare against that? Because he knows everything. Yeah. Uh, when Ramalho leaves phase, uh, we Rafa is a uh, like he he thinks like like the same as Ramalho, so I don't I don't know if he, this help Ramalho because it's a long time and they merge Atlanta then Eve we change a lot so I don't think this help us. Lots of maps played in the groups, six maps played today. You guys have got incredible stamina. Do you not yeah. get tired? Yeah, you know you, we screaming a lot to every day, so six maps is. Not a big deal, but when we play a champion, is the stress is a lot more intense. So this is the actually the worst thing. Yeah? All right, listen. I know that when you, whenever you jump on here, you're like, oh, my English is not so great. It's brilliant. But do you want to say to your home fans watching in your native tongue of Portuguese? Yeah, yeah. Would, would you like to talk to them? For everyone is uh, support phase. Thank you so much, everyone. We're working a lot to be better and better every day. So yeah, that's it. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Go and celebrate, I guess. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Fabian, you know, th this time last year, you were with this G2 roster that, that raised the hammer. How yeah. big of a blow is this loss? Uh, I don't think that's that big. I mean, it kind of proves a little bit that the ghost we spoke about earlier living in Alamo's head against Brazilian teams, it, it does exist. They were... I would say it, it, it kind of showed on their faces. Their facial expressions changed somewhere during map two, and it didn't really come back to their normal stuff. We predicted that both teams would be able to, you know, attack again, and we got a three-three half fresh. So we are seeing teams able to succeed in attack in this meta. Yeah, G2 got a three-three half. Phase managed to obviously then close it out in regulation as well as um. 
both teams had very different styles, and that was the yeah. big thing for me, is we watched two teams that are super, super comfortable attacking this map. G2, they used basically Lion and Ying every single round, and they will run Lion or Ying or Dokubi if available. Two of those three. What that does is it facilitates the early entry into the map. It gets them that early map control, and they struggled in the late round. They took a completely different approach to attacking this map. They brought operators that made sense for execute, smokes, vertical operators, a lot of buck, as we've seen Cyber play. They did that for the late round, which meant they struggled a little bit in the early round, but once they got to the point of the late round, they executed their plant and executes so well. So it was a pretty much attacking masterclass from both ways you could play Nighthaven Labs on attack. And I think like, I can build on to that point because I have got even more. We can stand here all day. Because the way that G2 started their attacks, it was really impressive. And I com keep coming back to what we were talking about Nighthaven before. And I love that we have new maps into the pool because it just goes to show that teams that innovate, they usually come out on top. And what we saw from G2 was they were getting early picks all the time, but they couldn't really build up from that every time. So we saw them being slightly lost mid-round, which honestly surprises me. But that goes to show that this map isn't as figured out as, for example, Clubhouse is. They still know how to play it really well, because as you said, Jack, two completely different styles, very good siege. But it goes to show that there are things that still surprise people. We'd never see a surprise in Clubhouse. I guess if you climb up the ladder in Oil Pit, we haven't seen that in 150 mm. years. But I mean, how, of how often do we get surprises? We had some amazing performances across the board. We could yep. stand here and pick players from FaZe and G2. I mean, Durkey, again, a, a phenomenal performance from him despite the loss. Yeah, I think, you know, he's been a solid player. He's found his, his rhythm, needs a few more people to step up around him. You know, we talked about Benja struggling. I think Alamo kind of probably shut down a little bit more in the IG League, yep. as we've seen across the last uh, games that they've played against Brazilian teams at international competitions. But yeah, speaking specifically about Doki, he's found his rhythm, he's found a nice place, and he just, he's, when, what you want out of players, I think, and you can say this, you know, we've both coached, you want players to be at like 100% plus 20, you want them to be doing their role that you expect, and then popping up a little bit more than that when they, you know, when they can, and that's where Doki's at. You've got a clip of Doki in round five you want to look at. I do, and it's an incredible team play that I want to show you guys. Look at what Doki does here. He has the Ying the Candela in his hand, and the EMP goes off to take away the Warden's glasses just as he yinks and pushes in against a two kill. This is what makes the difference between a good team yep. and a great team, because that is just an amazing play. And having the ability to unlock rounds that early and that aggressively mm -hmm. and that, I would say pretty easily. It's such a boon for them. And that's the 120% that you just saw in the yeah. clip. The 100% is the first kill, the 20% is the flick onto the second kill that really opens up the round. Fresh, FaZe coming into this were regarded by many as favorites, right? Yes. And then there was some doubt cast. I mean, one of the favorites coming yeah. in. There was some doubt cast during the, the group stages, but now they've solidified themselves as a front runner here, right? Yeah, I think so. I think the, if you kind of had to map out the, t the top three teams before the tournament, W7M, G2 FaZe were probably the three teams you were looking at. Coming into this game specifically, you'd probably it's quite even and then phase have gone one nil down completed a reverse sweep looked really comfortable in doing so in all honesty cafe only went slightly wrong remember that could have very easily been a 2-0 to phase and they're looking very dominant who do you think intel player of the game is fab should we find out oh, i have no idea handy souls one of the two i think souls most likely fresh I'm going to say it's Vita King. <laughs> well, obviously, right. because he's on the screen. <laughs> you know what? It was a huge clutch. When Uno watches this back, he will be really upset with himself from his own POV because he saw him and didn't shoot him. Um, Vita King, I want to talk about him, actually, because doesn't get a lot of praise, but those big plays in the late round, so much composure. Brazil's got an incredible amount of support players in the late round that have composure. Vita King, Souls, but also when you're looking at like Nade and Felipox on W7M, then pulling off two V5s earlier today, there are a lot of Brazilian players that have that composure in late round. And the funniest part is when Vita King came into this roster and I watched him play, I was not impressed. But the growth that he's had since he joined this team and got them better players around him, better support staff around him, he's just become oh, so much better. He's got that little bit of arrogance about him that you need as a yeah. player as well. I mean, I remember in Atlanta where he's standing up and riling up the crowd against SSG and all that mm, type yeah. of stuff as well. Well, listen, you guys have been here a lot longer than I have, but it is all starting to take shape now. We can take a look at the bracket and see the lay of the land. By the way, we are not finished yet, of course. We've still got another best of three series coming your way, but what do you make of how it's all shaking out in front of you, Fabian? I am just so excited to see all of the games coming up. Sonic's phase, I think, is going to be a barn burner yeah. because I think that people have been sleeping on Sonic's. People have just not talked about them much, I don't feel like, and they were really dominant in their group, and now they go up against 
lost, what again we've been considered one of the favorites. Now it's really time to show that they have it because if they win that game, that's definitely my favorite to win the event. I think there was a, a little bit of fear when it came to, you know, we want to make sure we see some Brazilian teams in front of the live crowd. I think a lot of fans watching at home will be delighted and relieved. I think all of us here are too fresh. Yeah, I think there was a, there was a real scenario earlier. I know Nip got over the line and we'll be playing, you know, next. Um, but there was a real scenario where there weren't many Brazilian teams in the upper bracket because of, of course only two teams can come from the lower bracket to the main stage. So there's going to be a lot of Brazilian teams fighting for that. So four phase for Brazil, this is a very good result. All right, guys, it's been a pleasure being back on a desk with you both. Thank you very much. It's been beautifully insightful and sometimes a little bit funny with you, Fab. But listen, when we come back after the break, it is SSG versus Dark Zero. But before we get there, we're going to throw you over to the B stream where it's Nip versus Vetchus Pro. Um,